I got the bombs ready. Behind and every time I get out of line, I look for a sign the whole time I thought I was lying. The whole time the sign was in front of my eyes. You gotta open up your bubble, gotta read that. Yeah. Gotta repent, my people gotta see that. Gotta put on the armor. Gotta pray to the Father and promise that I'm a tougher and I believe that. Woo! Friend is on and I'm with it. Never try to stop me, come and get it. The most I got me and I'd rather be godly doing what he taught me cause I need it. He picked me up when I fall. Yeah. Ain't afraid to go answer that call. Yeah. Give it all I got because we can't be stopped. The devil ain't gon' face me at all. You can't see me, Satan. Satan. I see you plotting over there, waiting. Wait, yeah. this kingdom is all for the taking. Yeah. Sit back while this purple keep raining. Your plans eventually gonna blow up. Yeah. When Christ return, you get towed up. Yeah. I endure this fight, messing with me. You might just get interceptable. That's the word. Benjamin, 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 Benjamin,
Yeah, make me rise, me precept the hell. Lies for get kill me, link Christ, he will accept the hell. Last me a pulse, so no try for pretend, yeah. He cut them up fine, as lies, them real tender. The Bible lies clever every time we contend. The only time them get cut, they might try for get clever. We cooler than the weather in the time of December. Make your heavy weight look like the tiniest feather. Got your index of money, pull up in a hearse. Profits are the most, I them could have never verse. Christianity, I could have in a dirt. Say your last word before me, pull another verse. Little fool, who look can't stop progress. Rise, we arise, why them a protest? You see, no, hard work result to success. Rise, we arise, why them a protest? We are work, and I climb up the ladder. Fool, rise, we arise, why them a protest? How come you are fight on your brother? Idiot, rise, we arise, why them a protest? I'm on sideways with them evil eye. They don't want to see me alive. They don't want to see me die. They're my crab in a barrel. No, they don't want to see me try. They're my slander. You got to like woman. Then we spread a lie. Do you really think you know the people? Them you think you know. The closest friend may bad mind. You want to want to see you grow. You better keep your mind shut. Better stay up on your toe. Instead of you see a right, they want to six feet below. No, no, no. Tell us how I get lost. Why you have up your children and your heart for your brother without a cause? No, 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 we move on, but them still stuck in the past. Yeah, yeah. Hard work, of course. Boss, I sweat. Reap where you sow, take where you get. Mm -hmm. Them stuck, replay. Like you said, run off on a moment, see no action yet. Little so. fool, who do can't stop progress? Rise, we arise, why them a protest? You see, no, hard work result to success. Rise, we arise, why them a protest? We are work, and I climb up the ladder. Fool, rise, we arise, why them a protest? Sicker than water, no that. Be them feeling full, no, he won't be back back. Never wear one by the words in chat. Anything him say, he might be validated that. And every soul you feel letting out your house. Carry your business around your secret expo. Won't like them lie, all them are do the most. Keep them at a distance, don't bring them close. Bad mind me, I'll be from them all the time. Blaze them with the fire, make it purge them, don't say mine. A righteous person is very hard to find. When you find them, don't let them go, they are one of a kind. Love me neighbor, ask me love myself. Me not go hold on for the crutch because them think that it's bad for your health. I saw me know, say you hate yourself. Instead of building from the ground, you occupied watching someone else. Little fool, who do can't stop progress? Rise, we are rise, why them a protest? You see, no, hard work result to success. Rise, we are rise, why them a protest? We are work, and I climb up the ladder. Fool, rise, we are rise, why them a protest? How come you are fight on your brother? Idiot, rise, we are rise, why This girl named Wisdom She's a very special person And my love for her is so strong I think heaven's where she came from And I really need her in my life She will lead me straight to paradise See, I met this girl named Wisdom I think heaven's where she came from She's my treasure Leave my side, I will not let her In my crooked way, she stood by me And in the rainy day, she sheltered me Without you, there is no me Please don't you set my soul free See, I met this girl in wisdom She's a very special person I 
Everything happens where she came from. Last night this was my revelation. Wisdom told me to be patient. She's been through the consolation. She said her love is in Zion. So don't you worry about your portion. Bishop on deck. Let's face Jerusalem. Men of Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. Heavenly Father, the God of our Father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, we come to in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Father God, for another Sabbath. We thank you for the fellowship of the brotherhood, Father God. We thank you, New Father God, for leadership. We thank you for bishop. We thank you, New Father God, for the captains, the officers. We thank you for the men, the women, the children. Father God, we pray, Father God, that you heal those who are sick in the midst of us. We pray, Father God, for the 12 tribes who are scattered in the four corners of the earth. We thank you, Father God, for choosing us. Are you IC, Father God, to spread the gospel in the four corners of the earth? Father God, we ask you, Father God, to continue to bless our leaders. With wisdom, knowledge, understanding, Father God. That they may wake up you, wake up you people, Father God. As Bishop about to open today, Father God, we ask you, Father God, the word goes out strong. The word goes out, Father God, that one may we pay. That one of us in here, Father God, the word can change our lives, Father God. Let us supply not only the, the hero, but let us supply our, the word, Father God. Heavenly Father, we thank you again, Father God, for everything you do for us, Father God. Father God, we also pray, Father God, that for the destruction of our enemies, those who hate us, those who want to see the rise of the nation of Israel, Father God, we pray for the destruction that they may never rise up again. Father God, do not forget the promise to make to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Father God, you say when we call you, we will answer, Father God. We are calling on thy name, Father God, especially in these last days. Father God, the enemy is rising up. The enemy is rising up in the four corner, Father God. But Lord, we got one thing they don't have is you, Lord. Father God, we ask you, Father God, you continue to fight for us. Fight for us, Father God, and destroy them, Father God. They are enemies just like your enemies, Father God. Lord, we thank you. Let the occasion say hallelujah. 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 We ask you also, Lord, you bless our food and our drinks. It's in the name of you, St. Jesus Christ, give you all praise or glory. Amen. Amen. Men Israel, sons of God, patient saints, sons of God, and salute! Christ bless. Salute! Down! Face, sisters, to the honorable daughters of Sarah, we say shalom. All praise, all praise to Mosai. Where's the camera is at? Hey, I'm talking to you, Deacon Laba. Where is he at? <laughs> and Deacon Malakaya. We got three bishops in the house! That's right.
Oh, please. Welcome back, Bishop. Welcome back, Bishop. Hey, you know the only difference is they got more better AC than me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really hot out here. It's really hot. But it's okay. We'll be all right. You know what they say, man. Where there's black people, there's no AC. You know what they say. AC don't work with. <laughs> oh, please. Bishop, you ready? Now, with you? Oh, we got Captain Joel in the house. Who we got over there? Hey, well, who we got over there? Oh, Barnabas is back. Who we got over there? We got Captain Ozai over there. Ozaya. Who was over there? Who's over there? And we got Captain Emmanuel in the house. And I, I'm looking over there, man. We got a lot of officers. Oh, officer Dewada is back. Oh, please. Welcome back home, Dewada. We got a lot of officers. Turn the camera over there. We got a lot of officers over there. Big Red is over there. We got a lot of officers over there. Oh, please. Two more side, man. Welcome. Welcome, brothers. One, two, one, two. Shalom, Israel. Most high in Christ. Bless you all. Happy Sabbath. Uh, I just want to say real quick that the Lord is definitely working with IUIC, and I'm glad to be in these times to see that. Uh, we were from a very small group, as a matter of fact, Bishop, the brainchild of this organization, if you will, but it started out as a very small seed, and the Most High have, have sought to bless his hands and bring forth the laborers to help bring us to where we are today and beyond. Uh, and the great works that I see in IUIC, when I think about those young brothers, like when we went through Baltimore, you can't get enough of talking about that. I don't mean, that shook up the world. No cameras at all. Understand, understand this here. No video, no media, no nothing. And it, there's, and, and you have a situation where you got uh, black men, you know, in terms of how the world will see us, in order in supreme order, bringing out the proper imagery for these young men to see, and no media wanted to touch that at all. No cameras or nothing, but yet millions of views because of the brothers and sisters that's out filming it. So the Most High is going to defeat the blackout anyway. So it's going to get out there. So it's give the Lord a hand because this gospel is going to get out there. They're not going to stop this. As surely as the Most High has blessed this congregation from the very beginning, the Most High was behind it, and he is still behind it. And we're going to get the job done. So you all all right with that? We're going to get the job done. And it was, a great, it was a great display of unity, which our people have not seen. I was looking at the young men as they see us coming through in perfect formation. And the men stand, the young men. And I'm looking at the, there was one particular one because I was watching some of the classes earlier. One particular one that looked like he was in a gang. Like, like you know, like he had some affiliation, tattoos and all that. You could tell he got the gang life all over him. But he's standing there. And he's watching. And in his mind, he's like, you know what? This looked like this could be a better way. And that's what we are here to do. We are to show our people with our, with our trained discipline, we learn how to come out of the same mess that our people are in and shape ourselves up. And then we, the message is, if we were able to clean ourselves up, you can do it too. And that's what they see. And without this imagery that we're bringing, our children are lost to apathy. They feel like, like, like there's no hope. And they begin to pine away in their own evil and their own iniquities and all that. But when they see you, they see hope. See, we are the, we are the living water that, that, that comes to life in the Bible. The, the, the words in the Bible is clear. But in terms of people seeing what the Bible is talking about, that's only going to be demonstrated through you. So when they actually see the Bible come to life, the Bible is alive when you walk. The Bible is alive when we operate in unity. And when the men see that, they be like, you know what, I've been reading the Bible all my life, but I never knew that this Bible had these kinds of things in it. And that's what's attracting them. And the so-called Christians can't figure that out. I love Captain uh, Hosea's class this morning, stomping and kicking Christianity in the ass. Boy, I love that. He was, giving them, he was giving them hell. I loved it. 
I was feeling every bit of it too. You know, so all of the classes that went out today is about this gospel reaching the four corners of the earth. So I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic about it. I'm glad to be in these times to see this to, to go down. And it's a beautiful thing. It's time for my people to wake up. And all of us, the Lord has given us the uh, ability to be a part of that great, that greatness. So give the Lord a hand for that thing. And let us, let us keep the unity, endeavor to keep the unity, to keep this train moving. Okay? All praise to the Lord. One, two. Most high Christ bless you all. Happy Sabbath. Men, ladies, yeah, I, you know, I'm so glad to be back here. It's like home for me now. Right. Yeah. It really is. It's good to be here in Atlanta. I enjoy, I enjoy myself here with you all. And my family in Austin, too. You all, too. But, you know, every chance I get to be around the bishops and the deacons and captains, uh, it's always gleaning, you know, and it's just good. You know, this is all we got. We at the bottom, we trying to get to the top. To hell with this world, you know. Let it burn. Let it burn, let it burn. And we're going to do it with the word of God. You know, I'm not going to hold the mic too much. May God bless and protect all of you. If you love God, I love you. And if you don't, you better repent. All right, Bishop, you up? Oh, praises. How are your sisters doing this Sabbath? Brothers, how are y'all doing? See, I, we like that. They having a more of a good time than y'all. So I'm going to turn my chair this way. You brothers good? You brothers all right? Can we, can, can we get them in the spirit? What the hell is this? Come on, ladies. Make up for that. Here you all go. Right, that's okay, what I'm talking all right, about. All right. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, please. It's definitely good. It's been a mo over a month since I've been back. Almost two months. Almost two months, but definitely... I'm not glad to be back in this heat, though. I feel like I'm back in Africa. <laughs> this heat. But um, today we're going to cover a lot of things. So let's go. who's reading for me? Officer Yuri, sir. Officer Yuri. Uh, did y'all congratulate Yuri close on his house? He, he growing up. My man growing up. <laughs> All praise to the Lord. All praise to the Lord. See, that, that makes my heart feel good when young men listen and get their lives in order. That's a message to you hobosexual brothers out there. Get your own, get your own. Anyway, let me, I'm gonna be nice today. Today's gonna be a nice class. I'm not, I'm not getting on nobody. Okay, Asa, I'm not getting on you either. I heard he was crying. Uh, somebody give Asa a hug. Is he here? Get a little boy a hug. Get that boy a hug. You're all right. Anyway. Today's topic, we're going to talk about the return of Isaiah and the fall of Arabia. We never talk about Arabia, but today we're going to talk about the Arabs. Nothing, nothing hatred. So you Arab, my, my, uh, uh, Arab, uh, uh, I'm trying to find a nice word. Friends out there, this is a friendly class for you to just listen to. I'm going to tell you what God says today. A lot going on in the world. ECOWAS is uh, talking about uh, they want to attack Niger because of, uh, there was a coup. But when you look at the majority of the ECOWAS countries, the majority of them became presidents because of a coup. And I'm like, what the hell is going on here? It's, oh, Niger, Niger. Listen, and it ain't Niger. Okay. Let me show you, hey, Asa, not Asa. Officer Yuri, I'm sorry. Give me Acts 13 and 1. I just want to get this word. Acts chapter 13 and verse 1. Now there, now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and certain, teachers. Certain prophets and teachers. Go ahead. As Barnabas and Simeon that was called nigger. You see that word right there? That's the same word they pronounce it Niger today. Niger. They say that pronunciation, and it's Latin, it just means black. It means black, but they pronounce it Niger so that they don't offend sensitive black people. Some of you are very sensitive about words, but that's not, the pronunciation is not Niger. Yeah, I know it's French, but nigger. 
And it's not Niger. It's nigger. How do I know? Let's go to Africa's Gift to America by J.E. Rogers. We're going to go inside the book. This is the book. Y'all can order this online. Go inside the book, please. Let's zoom into that highlighted section. I got my little pen around it. Read that. These, bring, it over, bring it over some. These first Africans were variously called nigger from river. No, pronounce it Niger. Say Niger. Yes, sir. These first Africans were variously called Niger from River Niger, Nigra, Niger, Ethiopian Moor. Niger was pronounced not Niger, but nigger. Y'all see that? I ain't making nothing up. Y'all thought I was being offensive. Oh, this nigga, he's so offensive. I'm telling you the truth. I got old books to show you how it was pronounced. Go ahead, y'all, sir. You know, when I see Esau do stuff like this here, that's, again, showing you how deep his, his diabolicalness goes. He wants to, quote, unquote, remove these sensitive, these so-called sensitive words to get you out of the understanding of Deuteronomy, the 28th, the, the 28th chapter, the byword and all those, those bad words that they said to us because that's going to cause us to read and find out that, you know what, we're not getting treated like everybody else. We better find out who we are in the Bible. So what they're trying to do is really just wash away our history. That's the reason why they're taking black history out of the school and all that, the CRT, all that. They want to get rid of all that to try to make us black, white people, so to speak. You're just dark in your face, but your whole mind and your mentality and your history, all that is washed. Negropeans. Ne Negropeans, stuff like that. No. Nigger is the way it was pronounced. Could you read it again? You got to put that word on because you got to say it the way the way the southerner said it. Read it again. These first Africans were variously called Niger. See, because this right here might be traumatizing, Bishop, if I say it the right because they don't want us to be. They said, I don't want them reading it like that because that's the way we used to talk to them like that. Go ahead. From River Niger. Go ahead. Niger. Niger. Ethiopian Moor. All of this was to cover up that last word, what we're about to get to. Go ahead. Niger was pronounced not Niger. So don't be fooled into thinking that it was called Niger. So basically the Niger River wasn't called the Niger River. All, all those things were called nigger. That's what they're saying. It was what? Not Niger, but nigger. So when you hear that word nigger, everybody knows. Because I can, I can feel people through the TV already just because of the way I'm saying it. A lot it. of these old Christian They're feeling it. They're feeling they, it. Uh, they're oh, feeling so it, I know, but that's the purpose of why they used to call us that. Mm -hmm. They wanted us to feel it. Now all of a sudden they want to act like we're okay, but in the meantime they treat us like treat us like niggas, mm -hmm. but tell you you're all right in Jesus. Right. Hey, Yuri, give me that in Deuteronomy twenty-eight thirty-seven, please. This is the prophecy, the curse that God said would one of the curses God said would be upon our people. Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight verse thirty-seven. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword. A proverb and a byword, is, for example, is nigger, negro, niger. Uh, what's the other pronunciation they had? What other one? What of them? Those are all bywords, proverbs and bywords. They all mean black. Those are other words. But yeah, I'm focusing on that one. So now I want to talk about the history of the Arab slave trade. Okay, you're going to do some reading today. Put it on the screen. A history, read it, Yuri. A history of the Arab slave trade. Go ahead, next one. Zoom in. Zoom. 140 million victims of the Islamic slave trade. We rarely talk about that. History hardly discusses the Islamic slave trade. We primarily focus on the transatlantic slave trade. A, Read verse Deuteronomy 20, verse 64, Yuri. Verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. When it says all people, it means all people. Go ahead. From the one end of the earth, mm -hmm. even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Even wood and stone. Now, when we fell under the Islamic slave trade, we worshiped a stone god called Allah or the Kaaba stone. Can you read the bottom of that? Move the, uh, yeah, read that. However, 
at least 28 million Africans were enslaved by the Muslims, as at least 80% of those captured by the Muslim slave traders were calculated to have died before reaching the slave market. You see that? You see that? So I don't, uh, don't tell me about 6 million people in some so-called holo, ours is a true holocaust. Okay, the hell is this? Listen, they gotta look at the math. Cause sometimes we go through this stuff too quick. Put yeah, it back you, up there. Uh, I'm you know black people quick. and math are friends. Well, not me and It's a 28 million. Let's look at that. 28 million. Then out of 28 million, 80% of those that were captured by the Muslims were calculated to have died. So 80% of 28 million, how much is that? 22 million. So where the hell they talk about this six garbage from? Mm -hmm. 22 mean, million. When you no, no, no. There's got to be more than that because it said 80%. Uh, huh? 22,400,000 22, of us died on mm -hmm. just before that we even showed up to the slave markets. Right. So what about the ones after it? So this is, your, this is to all your Muhammad friends out there in the bodegas. Now, not bodegas. What do they call them? They call them bodegas? Um, on the as, uh, aki, aki. You know, assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum salam, all that stuff. Yeah. These are their ancestors. Give me the next one. Read that, Yuri. Yet, the Arab slave trade, a major component of African history, lasted more than 13 centuries. It began in the early 7th century and continued in one form or another until the 1960s. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The Arab slave trade started in the early 7th century. That's about 600 uh, AD, 600 AD, until the 1960s. Read. In Mauritania, slavery was officially outlawed only in August 2007. Do y'all hear this? This is your friendly Arabs. Your assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum salam, brothers. Let's go to the next one. 610 AD. One of the most commonly asked questions. Remember, the slave trade started in the early 7th century. That's early 600s. That's, watch, right. Not 1600, right. 600. Right. Now read this. This is it. One of the most commonly asked questions about the history of Islam is when did Islam begin? Its origins can be traced back to 610 AD, which is when the prophet Muhammad pe oh, hell no. first saw the angel Jibril and shared the words of Allah. This is when the slave tra uh, the tra uh, Islamic slave trade started under Muhammad. Everybody understand that? For you, assalamu alaikum. And you, my, my black and Latino is Muslims out there, watch the class. Now, I used to be part of NOI, and, but when I learned the truth, I felt ashamed. I could not follow that no more. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Give me the next one. The Jews of Khazaria by Kevin Allen Brook. Now, you may be asking, but wait a minute. Aren't they the Jewish people? Yes, but watch, there's a certain part on the inside of the book. The highlighter section. For example, some Khazars became Muslims from circa 690 to the late 10th century. Some of these Khazars became Muslims. This is why you see them, hey, this is why you see them, uh, they, look, they don't look like brown skin Muslims. They all look, some of them look Caucasian up at the top, because some of them are extractions from the Khazars. Everybody understand that? Give me the next one. Yep, this is this one here. Give me the next one. That's a painting. Y'all know this guy, the Crown Prince. All right, give me the next one. Let's zoom in. Zoom in, top. Read that. This is Time Magazine. The Libyan slave trade has shocked the world. Here's what you should know. Raise it up. A video of men appearing to be sold at auction in Libya for $400 
has shocked the world. Wait, wait, wait. Go back. Go back. Go back out. It gives the date. Y'all, I want y'all to see the date. December. Remember they said it was officially ended in Merle Tain in 2007. His 2017 now. Do y'all see that date? Right. Go ahead. Read that. December 1st, 2017. A video of men appearing to be sold at auction in Libya for $400 has shocked the world and focused international attention on the exploitation of migrants and refugees in the North African country. The footage and subsequent investigation conducted by CNN last month has rallied European and African leaders to take action to stop the abuses. You know what amazed me about this? Echoes is rallying their forces to fight Niger or nigger. But they will not rally their forces, the African Union either, to go against Libya or Mauritania for enslaving their own citizens. Y'all see that? Nobody see nothing wrong with this? Total hypocrisy. Give me the next one. No, it should be a link or articles. The gray zone. The gray zone. Yes. The gray zone. Enslavement of African migrants. Big business in Libya. Thanks to EU funding. Thanks to European Union funding. Do y'all see the date? Do you see the date? April 17th, 2023. Y'all keep playing with these Muslims. You brothers and sisters that are Muslim, and you, wait, do you notice no black Muslim talks about this? Put it back on the screen. Put me in the box. You know the little box y'all got? Put, Alicia, you know that box? Put me in the box. Picture in picture, thank you. Come on, Alicia. Oh, God, IT. They had one job, put me in the box. One more, they thinking about Clubhouse? Not Clubhouse, I'm at, you know. Come, anyway, what was I saying now, what was I saying? No, no, what was I saying? Oh, 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 put it back on the screen. You brothers and y'all, no black nation of Islam, we love y'all, but y'all don't talk about this. You black brothers and sisters that are Sunni and Shiite, none of shh, none of y'all, put it back on the screen. None of y'all talk about this. You all need to be ashamed of yourselves, every last one of you. We didn't want to talk about it, but guess what? The men of the Lord, we gonna talk about it. What the hell is this? Get mad if you want. Bishop, it says, because. Reading it is horrifying. Enslavement of these black men, of these African migrants, is big business. So that means there's no plan for them to stop. They've, they want to keep this thing going in Libya, and it said thanks to the EU funding. So they're getting funded to enslave us. And when was this? April 17, 2023, four months ago. Read that, Yuri. Yes, sir. Enslavement of African migrants, big business. In Libya, thanks to EU funding, an investigation by the United Nations has concluded that money provided by the European Union to state entities in Libya has facilitated crimes against humanity, ranging from forced labor and sexual slavery to torture. Through its financial support of the Libyan Coast Guard and the Libyan Directorate, for combating illegal migration, the European Union has aided and abetted crimes against humanity, according to a recent UN report. Oh, I'm sorry. You see that part up there where it says uh, crimes against humanity ra raging from forced labor to sexual slavery to torture? You remember we were talking about, because we're still talking about it, these, about all these missing uh, young girls and all that? Who's to say that they're not, because that's where they're going. They're being brought into situations like this here. A $150 billion economy that they have. You know it's part of this here. Yep. Read on. On March 27, 2023, the United Nations released the findings of a three-year investigation confirming 
that arbitrary detention, murder, rape, enslavement, sexual slavery, extrajudicial killing, and enforced disappearance has become a widespread practice in the once prosperous nation of Libya, which was plunged into civil war by NATO's regime change war over a decade ago. While crimes against humanity were found to be widespread throughout the country, the report homed in on the plight of migrants and blamed the European Union for enabling the Tripoli-based government of national unity to enact abuses against Africans seeking asylum in Europe. The report stated in its introductory section, the mission found that crimes against humanity were committed against migrants in places of detention under the actual or nominal control of Libya's Directorate for Combating Illegal Migration, the Libyan Coast Guard, and the Stability Support Apparatus. These entities received technical, logistical, and monetary support from the European Union and its member states for inter alia, the interception and return of migrants. In other words, rather than directly intercepting migrants traveling by boat to Europe, the European Union has outsourced the dirty work to the Libyan Coast Guard. Once the Coast Guard detains the migrants, they are sent back to Libya and transferred to both official and secret prisons. Secret prisons, go ahead. Where they are often exploited for financial gain through forced labor. That's slavery, go ahead. Ransom or sexual slavery. That's the women, go ahead. These are reasonable grounds to believe that migrants were enslaved in detention centers of the Directorate for Combating Illegal Migration, the report stated adding that DCIM and Coast Guard personnel and officials are implicated at all levels. Wow. While high-ranking officials colluded with traffickers and smugglers, both in the context of detention and interception. Assalamu alaikum. Go ahead. The mission also found, found reasonable grounds. And you got black people talking about we want reparations. Listen, come on. As long as one of us is enslaved, None of us are free. Do you understand that? Because what they do to one of us, they can do to all of us. The hell is this? Go ahead. The mission also found reasonable grounds to believe that guards demanded and received payment for the release of migrants. Trafficking, enslavement, forced labor, imprisonment, extortion, and smuggling generated significant revenue for individuals, groups, and state institutions, the report claims. In 2017, international media reported the revival of the slave trade in Africa. Do y'all see that? Read that again, please. In 2017, international media reported the revival of the slave trade in Africa. Due to continuing fallout of the NATO-backed regime change operation to depose Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi. That's why they wanted to get rid of him. Go ahead. Well, one of the reasons they wanted to get rid of him, so they could do this. Go ahead. The United Nations has now confirmed that the practice not only persists, but that it has been enabled by the EU. You see that? Okay, we're going to end that one there. Give me the next picture, please. Y'all can read the rest of the article on your own. All you my Muslim brothers and sisters out there, read the article on your own. All right, so zoom in, make it big on the screen so people can see what our Arab friends did to us. These are etchings, drawings that was done. Okay, give me the next one. All right, scope of the Arab slave trade. Now, y'all can see the green line. You got the color key? Can you see what the color key says, Yuri? Yes, sir. The green, extent of Islamic world in 1150. Mm -mm. The green line, Islamic trade routes. So those are the green line is the Islamic slave routes, right? What's the... uh? Is that blue? You know, I'm looking at can't tell. Yes, yeah, so that's blue. What's that one? Viking sea trade and okay. settlement routes. All right, so we want to focus on the green, which is the Islamic slave route. And as you see throughout Africa, even there, because remember the Arabs took over northern Africa, North Africa up there. You got Yemen, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, all of that area. Even it goes up there toward Europe. Notice it goes over there to Iran, Iraq. All the way to the far right, I can't really read the words there. Can you see it? It's kind of blurry under Asia. But that's as far as the Arab slave trade took us. Okay, give me the next one. 
Next picture, please. Zoom in on that one. African migrations across the Indian Ocean. So I want you to notice from the eastern side of Africa, they took the Israelites, because this is Deuteronomy 2864. They took us from the eastern side, from Ethiopia, Kenya, Tan Tanzania, Mozambique, Madagascar. Look, and they took us to Mauritius. Uh, was that bottom one down they say? Reunion. Uh, up top, you can see they took us to Pakistan. Uh, they took us to India, Bay of Bengal, Sri Lanka. So these are places our people are at. And brothers, these are places we must eventually venture to go to. Y'all understand that? We need boots on the ground, brothers. Boots on the ground. Okay? A lot of work. So this... This is this right here. This is nothing. This is, when I look at this, this is just a microscopic, whatever you know the word. Real, it's like a, it's nothing compared to where our people have been scattered to. Okay, give me the next one. Let's zoom in on that one. Okay, this is more with the Islamic slave trade, Muslim lands, the red. This is where they took us, even to Europe, up there throughout Spain. With a slave, the transatlantic stuff. Hello? Hello? Come on, come on. You can X out of that, Elisha. We don't need it. I had the map up there. He was, go back to the map. The other map. There was another map, brothers. Am I back in New York again? Am I back in New York? Right. That one. Bring it back to where Bishop can see it, because he was over here. Yes. Now I forgot what I was going to say. Just give me the next one. You were naming the places where we was going, like Spain and all that, where we were taken to. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate you. Give me the next one. Uh, zoom in on that. And Elisha, I mean, Yuri, give me Jeremiah 2.26. So this is the Kaaba stone. The Kaaba stone. The word Kaaba is Arabic for black. Kaaba stone means black stone. Read that, Jeremiah 2, 26. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 26. As the thief is ashamed when he is found, so is the house of Israel ashamed. They, their kings, their princes, and their priests, and their prophets, saying to a stock, thou art my father, and to a stone, thou hast brought me forth. For they have turned their back unto me, and not their face. Wow, wow, wait, 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 wait. Read that again. Saying to a stock, thou art my father, and to a stone, thou hast brought me forth. We said to a rock. We said to a rock what? Saying to a stock, thou art my father, uh -huh. and to a stone, thou hast brought me forth. Thou hast brought me forth. Okay, now I'm going to post something right now. I just want y'all to see this. Elisha, pay attention. You got it? I just posted it. You used to tell me if you got it. All right, let me know. Okay, Yuri, one more again, one more again, one more again, one more again. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 27. Saying to a stock, thou art my father. So a stock is a piece of wood. Go ahead. And to a stone. And to a stone. Thou has brought me forth. Thou has brought me forth. That's your Kaaba stone. That's your Allah. Okay. Put that on the screen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Read that, Yuri. Slavery in the Arab World by Murray Gordon. All praises. Let's go inside. Can you zoom in on that? Pre-Islamic Arabia and Egypt were terminal points of well-traveled slave trade circuits some of the most important of which originated in the Sudan and Somalia. The Bildad as, excuse me, the Balad as Sudan, the land of the blacks. That's what it means, land of the blacks. Mm -hmm. Had for time immemorial attracted slave raiders who found a ready demand for their captives in nearby Egypt. Go over to the next page. Ethiopia. Another rich catchment area for slaves. Habashas, the name given to the Ethiopians by the Arabs. So that's, these are proverbs and bywords. Go ahead. 
filled the slave marts of Mecca. Filled the slave marts of what? Of Mecca. A lot of y'all didn't realize Mecca was a slave port. To my, to my black brothers and sisters in Islam, you going on a hajj. That was the largest slave mart in the world. What is wrong with you? Who raised you? We don't want to talk about that. Uh, 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 Asalaamu Alaikum. Oh, go suck an egg somewhere. The hell is this? Go back. It was not. I'll read it again. Habashas, the name given to the Ethiopians by the Arabs, filled the slave marts of Mecca, returning great profits to the merchants who put up their capital to trade in them. It was not surprising that Muhammad who accepted the existing socio-political order looked upon slavery as part of the natural order of things. So y'all be talking about he's the prophet of God? Muhammad was no pro black man, black woman, black man, black woman, listen to me, listen to me good. Muhammad was no prophet of the most high God. This dude hated black people. He enslaved us, the children of Israel. Okay, I want to, give me that name, it's 12, the only prophets are the Israelites. Amos 2.11. The book of Amos. Hey, Elisha, find me a picture of Mecca, please. Amos chapter 2, verse 11. And I raised up of your sons. And I raised up of your sons. For prophets. For what? For prophets. He's talking about the Israelites, not the Arabs. The Arabs were never prophets of the Lord. Read. And of your young men for Nazarites. Is it not even thus? O ye children of Israel. Children of who? Children of Israel. Only the children of Israel were prophets. Muhammad was never a prophet of God. Put it on the screen. Put it on the screen. This is where we were sold. This is where we were sold. This is where we were raped and robbed and murdered. Right here in Mecca. Right here in Mecca. Get mad if you want. I don't give a damn. The hell is this? Give me back, give me the picture of them um, kissing the damn rock again. Yeah, go on to the next one. Looking like a, it looks like a vulva, that you ask me. That's what it looks like. You gotta stick your head in there, you gotta kiss it. Give me the next picture. Look, he's spreading the lips apart. <laughs> the hell is this? Look, they look yeah, he's spreading the lips apart. I'm sorry, y'all, I'm rude. I apologize. Though I be rude in speech, but not in knowledge. Give me the next one. Next one. Let's zoom in. There we go. And millions of people go there every year. And there was just a typhoon there last week, I believe it was. Next one. Mm -hmm. Oh, they did get kissed in the rock. And, then, and you know what they do? Muslims will lie and say don't, they don't worship the rock. That's what they all say. They don't worship the rock. Give me the next one. They say, oh, no, no, we just kiss it. We don't worship it. We don't worship. That's a lie. Give me the next one. Read that, Yuri. Basic tenets of faith. Summary of answer. Kissing the black stone is an act of worship. It's an act of what? Of worship. They worship the black rock. That's what we just read in Jeremiah chapter 2. It's the same thing. Go ahead. Kissing read it again. The, read it again. Yeah. Kissing the black stone is an act of worship in which a Muslim kisses a stone to which he has no connection except worshiping Allah by venerating it and following the messenger of Allah by doing that. You see that? So they worship that stone. This is why you brothers and sisters come out of Islam. Come out of Islam. I came out, so can you. Okay? Hey, Yuri, read that again, Jeremiah. Keep that on the screen. Jeremiah 2.27 again. Yes, sir. Saying to a stock, thou art my father, and to a stone, thou hast brought me forth. That's that stone, that Kaaba stone. Read. For they have turned their back unto me, and not their face. But in the time of their trouble, they will say, arise and save us. How are you going to say to a rock? Arise and save us. Impossible. Give me Deuteronomy 32. Hey, put the picture back on the screen of uh, them kissing a rock. <clears throat> put one of them pictures back up. Yeah, put that one on. Yep. Now, watch this. Deuteronomy 32, 16. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 16. They provoked him to jealousy. So the Israelites, our people, we provoked the Most High God to jealousy. 
Go ahead. With strange gods. With what? With strange gods. With strange gods. Go ahead. With abominations provoke they him to anger. Watch verse 17. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. Our people sacrifice unto devils, not to God. Watch this. To gods whom they knew not. To gods whom they knew not. Here it comes. To new gods that came newly up. You know what I mean by new gods? Allah, this is a new God. It came 610 years after the birth of Christ. Do y'all hear what I'm saying here? This is a new, this has got to be one of the newest religions on the planet Earth. Read the whole verse again, 17. They sacrifice unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Our fathers never showed respect or veneration to kissing a rock, kissing a stone, Kissing anything called Kaaba or Allah? Are you insane? Go to Jeremiah 3 now. Jeremiah 3. Give me that next picture. Give me the next picture. Yep, zoom in on that. Jeremiah 3. Uh, let me see. Start at verse 1. And just keep, keep the picture on the screen. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse now, 1. Now, this is Mecca. Let me say it again. This is Mecca. Where they had the Israelites sitting on the ground in the slave market. Look in the background. Black men and black women with chains on their necks. Do y'all see that? Okay, I just need to make sure this, and keep the image right there. Read. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 1. They say, if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? So it was forbidden for a man to go and take a wife back if she slept with another man. That was God's law. He said, don't do it. But now Jeremiah is going to bring it out in a spiritual context. Read. But thou hast played the harlot. We played the harlot with other gods. Go ahead. With many lovers. Mm -hmm. The many lovers meaning many gods, many false religions. Go ahead. Yet. Return again to me, saith the Lord. The Lord said, yet return to me. Watch this. Lift up thine eyes. Wait, read that again. Yes, sir. They say. From verse 2. Verse 2. Yes, sir. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places. So now Jeremiah says, lift up your eyes unto the high hills. I mean, the high hills were places of worship. Go ahead. And see where thou hast not been lined with. The word lying means corrupted. Corrupted with. What is he talking about? Read. In the ways hast thou sat for them. Do you see our sisters sitting for them right there? In the ways hast thou sat for them. Who's the them? Read. As the Arabian in the wilderness. We sat for the Arabs, the Arabians in the wilderness. This is what the Bible's prophesying about. That we would worship false gods under the Arabs. This is the only book that prophesies our history from start to finish. There's no book that you can equate to the Holy Bible. The Quran don't even talk about this stuff. There's no prophecies in the Quran. Challenge them. Ask the Muslims, show us prophecies concerning our people. What happened to us and what's going to happen to us? There's nothing in there. Assalamu alaikum. Read again verse 2. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places and see where thou hast not been lined with. In the ways hast thou sat for them. As the Arabian in the wilderness. We sat for the Arabians in the wilderness in their slave forts. Go ahead. And thou hast polluted the land. And learning Islam, we polluted the land. This is how many of our when we were in Sierra Leone or in Uganda, we would ask the people, Uganda, they were Muslims. How, what does Islam mean? How did you become Muslim? They said we're Muslim because our parents were Muslim. But, and when we challenged them, ask, show us the Quran prophets, they can't do it. Don't be afraid to challenge them. Challenge them not in the spirit of hatred, but in the spirit of love. Because our job is to win them to God's truth, that they're the Israelites. Everybody understand that? Read. And thou hast polluted the land. We polluted the land with Islam, the religion of the Arabs. Go ahead. With thy whoredoms. With our whoredoms, worshiping of rocks and stones. And with thy wickedness. And with our wickedness. Because it's been, if, even today, you see the Arab invasion still. Okay, what they're doing. Remember, one of these countries, they wanted to get uh, all the blacks. Uh, what country was that? Not Mauritania. Damn. The president went on TV and said, it's been a while, a couple of months ago, 
If anybody know what I'm talking about, give Alicia the, uh, the video. Give me the next picture. Yes, zoom in on that. Here's the history. This was in Iran, Persia. Look at the black woman. Let's zoom in. Come on, y'all. Black woman is a slave. A Muslim, this is how we became Muslims. Okay, we was a slave to them. This is a photograph, not a drawing. So you at home can't say, oh, Bishop, you're lying, you're making that up. No, I'm showing you photos now. I'm going to show you photographs. Give me the next one. You don't want to talk about it? Well, guess what? We're going to talk about it. Look all in the background, the slave children. The owners are them in the front, the three in the front of their owners. Oh, look at all them black faces in the background, black boys, slaves. This, is, I believe, was either Turkey or Persia. Give me the next one. Look at that. Do y'all see the little black girl right there at the bottom of the stair right there? Slave. They took her in. She's a slave to raise her up, dress her nice, but she was a servant. And when they wanted to rape her later on, they raped her. They probably, some of their books said they raped them very young, too. Assalamu alaikum, brother. You got to be kidding me. You should be ashamed. Christianity, Islam, and Islam, two of the bloodiest religions on the planet Earth. I don't care. You can get mad, suck your teeth, call your mama. I don't care. Call your rock. I don't care. Give me the next one. Look at that. That boy is the owner of that slave in the back. That tall slave, that tall black slave in the, black, in the back. You can't make this up. Photos, brothers and sisters, photos. Not drawings. Give me the next one. Y'all see that? You see the brother in the back, far right? Slave. And the one on the floor is mixed. His owner is right there. The boy sitting down is the owner. Okay? This is real talk today. Get mad if you want. Share this video with all your Muslim brothers and sisters. Share, share, share. Give me the next one. Look at that. Look at that. See that? Slave. Got to hold up the baby. Play nice with the baby. Be nice with the baby. Give me the next one. Look at that. Play nice with their children or else we'll kill you. That's what they did with us. We, we were their guardians. Now today, our, pe our people in Islam will fight for that religion. Nobody can hear you. We were also their gift. Like when you looked at that uh, movie called, well, it's a documentary called Goodbye Uncle Tom. And they had a girl that got a boy, got, got a slave for her, got like a Christmas gift or something. And she was running with it. It's the same thing going on over here. Mm -hmm. That little girl there, is, she received that tall brother as a gift. Right. And brothers, sisters, understand, these were our brothers that was taken from Africa, from the East Coast, Israelites from the East Coast, taken to these other parts of the world. And our people have forgotten about them. I'll ask a black man on the street, they say, that's not our people. No, that's not. We've forgotten them. But God is not. Give me that Matthew 15, 24. Keep the picture on the screen. You don't need to see me. Matthew. You, chapter. You, yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Matthew. Matthew. Chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That word lost. Lost our culture, our heritage. We lost our freedom. We'd already begun to be scattered in slavery. What are you going to say, Bishop? Yeah, that's a good scripture because we lost our mind in, ter in terms of understanding the relationship. If you're small like this little girl here and you receive a human being, a man as a gift, and all, the, all of the people that look like you receive human beings as gifts, they're going to have a total, total different mentality than us. They're going to always look at you as property. They're not going to look at you as equals. They're not going to look at us like we're going to one day get together. They're not going to ever see us that way. So that's the reason why the most I said your enemies got to go into captivity. That's the only way they're going to learn. They're not going to just all of a sudden just become nice. They've been bred to look at us like we are their property. And, Period. Right. And to all you rappers out there, why don't you ask DJ Khalid about stuff like this? 
You think he don't know about this? He goes back and forth over there. He know, but he ain't gonna tell you about it. You go, you just buy his music like a good nigga slave. Keep on buying his music. Y'all, simple. Our people simple as hell. Give me the next picture. Look at this. Not slave boy as bought as a servant for these children here. Give me the next one. Blow it up. They even put us in their military. They even put us in their military to fight for them. They raised us up from children to love and adore them. Now our people, just like Christianity, it's no different. Black Christians will give their life for white Jesus, for this white man. Just like our brothers in Islam will give their life for the Arabs. They can do no wrong. So now, I know the Bible with some of y'all online, you say the Bible may not be a good source for some of you. We read the scriptures. We read some scriptures about the Arabs. We ain't done yet with them. Okay. But I got a lot of books. Some I bought. Some was gifted to me. A few days ago, after the men's conference, I decided to sit down and read a little. One of the books I had gotten back in 2018. And this book I got back in 2018, I only used it to show the map of the Israelites in Africa. That's, I never read the book, but I just pull out the map. But I decided, let me sit down and look inside the book. Did some reading. So, I'm going to show you a little bit of that. But what are the signs that would follow Israel? I want you to remember this. What are the signs that would follow the Israelites? According to Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 through 68. Read verse 45 and 46. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45. Moreover, all these curses. All these what? All these curses. All these curses. Shall come upon thee. Shall come upon the Israelites. And shall pursue thee. And shall pursue thee. And overtake thee. And overtake thee. Till thou be destroyed. So the curse of God would overtake us and pursue us. Read on. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. Yeah, read it again. One more again. One more again. One more again. Moreover. No, read, read, well, read on. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments. Because we didn't want to keep his commandments. Go ahead. And his statutes, which he commanded thee. It always goes back to our disobedience of God's laws. Can somebody tell a Christian that? Can somebody tell a Muslim that? Okay. We ain't going to get a strike for this, are we? Go ahead, play it. Let me see. Take the music out, I guess. Go ahead, play it. So this is what Bishop Yawasat was talking about. Go ahead, speak on it while yeah, the point that I was bringing out is her mentality, she will never see what she considers a gift to be her equal. So we, we out here in society trying to make it seem like we can one day long get along with them and all of that. That is not how they were brought up. They were always brought to look at us just like what you see here. And it never changed. I was looking at a video with Captain Hoshea and the, he, you had a black man talking about some Black Lives Matter. Oh man, that video was crazy. You had a black man saying the Black Lives Matter. The white woman came up and said, no, that ain't the case. She said, because you are nothing. You ain't nobody in society. I wish we had that clip, Bishop. She said, you could probably go end up getting shot by a cop or something. Your life ain't worth a damn. damn. <laughs> Told him that. And his whole spirit was broken. Wow. Yuri, read that again for us. I'm sorry. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45. Moreover, all these curses. I want you to notice the word. It says curses. Go ahead. Shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee. You can't shake it. Go ahead. Till thou be destroyed. You can't economize. Is that even a word? You got, you got these black scholars. They call themselves scholars who really believe that economics is the way to escape God's curses. Black, ask Black Wall Street. Did that money that they had save them? No, it did not. Can somebody tell the what's his name? Co the, what's the older man? Gray hair. He always wears a scarf. Oh, uh, Colin West, yeah, well, Cornell yeah, West, yeah. and the people like him. Economics is not the way to escape God's curses. Read it again. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, 
till thou be destroyed. So can somebody tell my dear brother Claude Anderson? Because he's a big one on economics. And it all sounds good. But economics cannot escape God, cannot save us from God's judgments. Everybody understand that? We need you brothers and sisters to understand that too. Because some of you are well off financially. But the curses still apply to you too. Read. Because... Thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee. Read. And they and shall... They, when it says they, the they is the curses. And they, meaning the curses, go ahead, shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So the curses would be a sign that identifies who the children of Israel are. Whoever these curses fit, those are the children of Israel. Read. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Forever. For how long? Forever. Ever, ever. Forever. Now, write this down. The curses involve four things. Slavery. Number two. Loss of identity. That's verse 37. Deuteronomy 20, 37. Loss of identity. Colonialism is number three. And number four is oppression forever. Those four things identify collectively who the Israelites are. Slavery, loss of identity, colonialism, oppression. Thank you. That identifies who the children of Israel are. Uh, put the video back up with Mecca. The video, the video. This is what happened here in Mecca. Put it on the screen. This is Mecca, slave port. There's no sound, Elisha? Oh. You know who they cry into a rock to save them? See that? That was in the... So. So, I was making a point that I had got a book six years ago that I never read. So, I, this weekend, I decided to sit down and just go through it. Put it on the screen. So, this is the Look at the price today for this book. When I got the book, it was not nowhere near that. $9,500. Yeah, plus shipping. Now, the name of the book is the lost tribes a myth suggestions towards rewriting hebrew history in this book written by alan howard godfrey put his picture up alan godfrey he's the one on the far right he's the eden the zoom in yeah that's him right there okay pull back out now read that alan howard godby 1864 to 1948 of Missouri was a Methodist minister, Methodist historian and teacher. So now this dude, what you're going to find out, he was a racist. He found all this information. He's the one that found the map uh, where the Israelites are. But in his writings, what I found out, he put the truth and then he would try to contradict it. Read. Writer and scholar in the field of the Old Testament, Hebrew history, archaeology, and Semitics. He was a professor at Duke University, 1926 to 1932. Okay, so now let's go inside the book. Let's go inside the book. Published by Duke University. Read that, Yuri. In the Warla, o, excuse me, in the Wargla Oasis of Algeria, 350 miles from the Mediterranean, is a colony of Jews as black as Negroes. But of see, Jewish type. Do you see that? But what I want y'all to see, what he does is, but of Jewish type. They're black as Negro, but then he throws in things like that so to make you think maybe they're white. Mm -mm. They throw you off. Go to the next one. So let's see where Algeria. Let's see what this area is. Algeria is there. The Wargla is right there where the red is. They, they spell it differently today. Give me the next one. 
This is what they, this is them right there. Does that look like a, so, a white man? These are the wall gloves, okay? Look, invisibility and negrophobia in Algeria. You know what, when it says invisibility, they don't want to show you this on TV. They want to show those particular type of Arabs who have very little melanin, those are the Arabs. But they neglect these Muslims here. These, go back to the, the book again. Go back to the book. This is them. Right there, zoom in again. In the Wargla Oasis of Algeria, 350 miles from the Mediterranean, is a colony of Jews, as black as Negroes, but of Jewish type. Now go back to the picture now. Go back to the picture. This is them right there. Black people. These are, these are the ones that was taken from the east coast of Africa. This is generations later now. Centuries later now. Give me the next picture. This is them there. This is them there. These are the ones from the east coast of Africa. You can't make this stuff up. And they want to keep this invisible. Okay. Give me the next picture. Let's read the top. The Tunisian Jews are of African origin, as is evident from their type, their customs, and their ethnic names. They came from the South or the Sahara. Above all, the Jews of Tunis seem to have no conception of solidarity. No conception of solidarity, unity, that means unity. They can never unite themselves together. Go ahead. With very few exceptions, they are extremely ignorant and given to the most curious superstitions. So now he insults them. This is what this writer does. But he puts the truth in, but he said, with every truth, I must insult them because I can't believe these are the Jews. He, remember, he's a Methodist minister. All his life, he grew up thinking the Jews was white. Then he found out they're black. And this is them. These are the Jews of Tunisia. These are the Israelites, the Bible, Deuteronomy 28 talked about in verse 64 on down. Give me the next page in the book. Zoom in at the top highlighted section. Read that. Of Stop the, with but. Yes, sir. But the body of their language is that of the Yoruba Negroes about them. 400 families claim Semitic ancestry. That means descends from Shem. Shem. So when Amalek says, oh, you're anti-Semitic. We are Semitic. What the hell is wrong with you? Read. And may not intermarry with fetishists, but may with Muslim families because they are monotheists. So many of them have been acclimated to Islam. Raise it up. Look what it calls them. Go ahead. These Yoruba Jews. What? Yoruba Jews. This is what the racist Methodist pastor found out. These are the Jews. Go ahead. These, these Yoruba Jews claim that their ancestors were driven from oasis to oasis by Muslim persecution. That's true. Go ahead. Not finding rest, even when they reached Timbuktu. Wait, wait, wait. Y'all see the part? Not finding rest, even. Go back to Deuteronomy 28, and I think it's verse 65, 66. Yes, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 65. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease. Mm. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. What? Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. Yeah, see, and that's what it says right there. It says, not finding rest even when they reach Timbuktu. Read that, Yuri. The book of the scripture, sir. The scripture, I'm sorry. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. Read. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even. And at even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning. For the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. Let's go back to the book now. Read that again from these Yoruba Jews. These Yoruba Jews claim that their ancestors were driven from oasis to oasis by Muslim persecution, not finding rest, even when they reached Timbuktu. It suggests that these ancestors may have been of the 
Dagatoons still scattered along the trade routes west of Timbuktu or of the vanished Jewish kingdom of Kamnori. So he knows there was a kingdom of Jews in Africa. Go ahead. Or of the, la of the later trading colony of Lamlun. At present, they number about 2,000 people in 20 little villages and call themselves by the Hebrew name Benai Ephraim. That means sons of Ephraim. Go ahead. They have copies of portions of the Torah kept in a most holy place. But their social life is not Torah controlled. It is that of their fetishist neighbors. Of course, their remaining Judaism is not rab rabbinical. I mean, it ain't following Amalek. They retain certain Jewish customs and observe the great holy days. Otherwise, they are simply naked, naked Negro savages. You see that hidden insult? This is what he does. This is what this writer does. Go ahead. So they are described by one of themselves, the Batak Kendai Amgoza Ibn Lo Begola, who was carried from Judah Dahomey. Right, because that word weed is Portuguese for Judah. Okay. Now, give me the next page. Mm -hmm. These facts have a peculiar significance when the presence of Judaism among American Negroes is to be considered. So now, what he, when he went from Africa, now he says, well, a lot of them came as slaves over here. Let's examine Judaism amongst the American Negroes. Go ahead. Hundreds of thousands of slaves were brought to America from this Western Africa during the days of the traffic beginning in the slave trade. That's traffic means okay. beginning nearly 400 years ago. See that 400 years ago. That's the 1400s. Okay. How much more of Judaism survived amongst West African Negroes in that earlier time as persecuted communities. They were rather more in danger than other Negroes of being raided by war parties and sold as slaves. Did y'all see that? Did y'all see that? As persecuted communities, talking about those Negroes, they were rather more in danger than other Negroes of being raided. So the ones that was practicing God's law, they, 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 they was in more danger than the rest. Go ahead. It may be considered certain that many partially Judaized Negroes were among the slaves brought to America. Y'all see that right there? Y'all see that? And you see the part where it says war parties and sold their slaves? Mm -hmm. That's letting you know that Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, was talking about us. Right. Go ahead. I'll read it again. It may be considered certain that many partially Judaized Negroes were among the slaves brought to America. Can I have a bomb? Thank you. How many of them might still hold some Jewish customs in their new home is another question. New home meaning America. Raise it up. On the Cabinda Coast in Portuguese West Africa is an interesting group of Negro Jews known as Mavumba. They are skillful smiths and potters and consequently prosper. Ratzel considers them connected with the colony of Jews expelled from Portugal and settled on San Tome Island. See that? That's the 1400s, guy. The Portuguese discovered San Tome in 1471, finding it very unhealthy. King John II of Portugal in 1484 offered the Jews of his dominion the pleasant alternative of submitting to baptism or settling at San Tomé. So we had to accept lying Christianity or be settled on San Tomé. Read. Great numbers were sent they out. They took great numbers of black Jews from Spain and Portugal and took us to San Tomé. That's the history. Give me the next page, please. Zoom in at that top. The other groups, the Orthodox Negro Jews, as they styled themselves, are not so strict and are glad to have themselves photographed. Dr. Fishberg visited the rabbi of only one congregation, the Orthodox Beth Zion, which has only a few members. And it is his opinion that while among these Harlem colored Jews, there are some whose ancestors were really Abyssinians, Falashids, etc. The majority of them are, as he expresses it, 
fakers. Wait, wait. You see that? Another insult. Fakers. You're not real Jews. But he already said those Jews came from Africa. He already put that in there. But now he has the insult. You're fakers. You're not real. This is what these Amalekites do. Go ahead. That is. They are real American Negroes. So, you see that? Now you're just in a... Like you always say, the American Negro was made in a laboratory. Right. There's no such thing as an American Negro. That was a creation. What we are, we're the Jews. We're the Israelites. Read. That is, they are real American Negroes who make believe that they profess Judaism in order to be able to collect money from the white Jews. Especially some of their leaders, their so-called rabbi, rabbis, are of this type. See, they, they only, he puts the truth in, but he must insult us. He has to. That's what he does. That's the same thing that they did in that book called Spanish Illumination, where it was talking about Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ and majesty. When yep. they said that his, his flesh tones give him, his darkened flesh tones give him an almost Negroid cast. Right. You look at the picture, you say, no, that's a black man. But once you read that right, and you go back to sleep. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's doing here. He's waking you up and then putting you back to sleep at the there same time. There you go. Time. There you go. But his people know, his people know the exactly American what Negro is the real Jews. Exactly. Go ahead. Come on, Yuri, raise it up. Alicia, come on, pay attention. These Negro Jews in Harlem begin to be conspicuous about eight years ago. Remember, this book was written around 1932. So eight years prior to that, he's making reference to. So the Negro Jews in Harlem started to make themselves known. Go ahead. The above-mentioned Beth Zion congregation was the first to form. Their rabbi Mordecai, a former sailor who traveled all over the world and speaks a fluent Yiddish, was the founder. Then he disappeared, and his place is taken by Rabbi Israel Newman, who says that he hails from Egypt, but was really born in North Carolina. It seems that he traveled a lot before he settled in New York. Rabbi Joshua Ford of the Second Orthodox Congregation, the Beth Abraham, was born in Barbados, West Indies. This congregation has about 30 members. Bishop Matthews claims that his ancestors were Negro Jews. Rabbi Ford knows Hebrew well. The others know very little. See that? More insult. Go ahead. Next page, please. Zoom in. As for himself, he says that his... Talking about Bishop Ma uh, Matthews. Go ahead. As for himself. He says that his grandfather was one of the black Jews of Nigeria. Jump down. Thus, Bishop Matthews claims an immemorial Jewish ancestry. But... Since, this, since that ancestry is Negro, it follows that Negroes were the original Jews. That's right. That's right. They can hide it if all they want. It's coming out. It's coming out. Go ahead. This is a development from Bishop Matthew's congregation. It has received no help from the white Jews and observes that the white Jewish papers call them fakers. But... My friends, we are not fakers. Every black man is a real Hebrew, whether he knows it or not. There you go, right there. There you go, there you go. What the hell is this? And you know, if when you read, wow, I'm blown away. But anyway, that's no different. When they call them Negro Jews, is no different than call us Hebrew Israelites. They're trying, we are the Israelites. Or, or black Hebrew Israelites is what I'm trying to say. We, we are the Israelites. We don't need to be called black Hebrew Israelites because the Israelites are black. We know that already. But this point is that this is their books. You know what he happened to him? Is that he's a historian. Can you put Bishop on the screen, please? It, it, that this man is a historian. He was in a dilemma because he finds the truth and he has to record what he reads because this is his profession. But at the same time, he's conflicted because he knows that, damn, these are the Jews, and I hate these niggas. Right. I hate them, but I have to write what I, what I know. At the same time, I have to write something to diss them, to try to muddle or mix up their history that they're not. I'm telling you, he was in turmoil when he found this information out. He was struggling in his mind, and the Lord made him write this and leave these records. 
that's exa- that's so now it. what you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I'm still learning. All <laughs> What's amazing about this is that just like Bishop is bringing out, they, have, they do, they go and get this research, they write it in their books, but it's like you always used to bring out Bishop for white eyes only. That's, but they said, but let's put some, so let's put some racist writing in there to throw them off just in case a Negro comes across the book. But the book was never meant for us to get it. Right. It's right. to alert their people. Listen, we got to keep our eyes on these people here. So they always, they got, to, they got to know our history. The problem is, is when we learn, when we learn it. So they said, just in case they get a hold to it, let's put some slick writing in there to put them back to sleep just in case. Like Gladiator, like the, like the book Gladiator. Negro, it said gladiators in Rome. It said, but it said Negroes a rare sight in Rome. Right, right. They put that in there to put you back to sleep. But then they said that the, all of the gladiators was in Rome, and they talked about them fighting each other, and they were black, and they got pictures of them all in the pages. But then they're gonna tell you after you looked at the pages, they're gonna talk about some Negroes a rare sight in Rome, right. and all of the pictures of black people with swords and armor and all and all of that. That's to put you back to sleep. Right. See, this is information they don't want in the schools. They'll let that, what's that sister with the red hair? What's her name? She said she want her booty scratched or something. Red hair. She got red hair. You rappers know what I'm talking about. Sukihana. Sexy red. They let her go into schools. But if we try to go into the schools to teach, ah, pump the brakes. Uh-uh, not you guys. You're not allowed. But she can bring her filthy self what, in. What's her name? Sexy, Sexy red. red. See, well, we want to send big red into the schools, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, they let her into the school Lord, talking about. Jesus. Is she the one that said her her booty brown? <laughs> they let her come into a learning environment to talk about that filth, but they won't let men of the Bible to teach edu- true education come right. into an educational facility. Exactly. This is definitely Babylon the Great. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So now let's go to the. Oh, yeah, that's her right there. Put it on the screen so they can see what I'm talking about. That's her sexy right. Nasty right. That's her. No, she can repent. God willing, she can repent. No hate, sis. No hate. Uh, give me the next book. So this book here is entitled, um, uh, Yuri, read that. Yes, sir. Light and Truth, Collected from the Bible and Ancient and Modern History, Containing the uni- Universal History of the colored and the Indian race, from the creation of the world to the present time, by R. B. Lewis, a colored man. Jump down to the year it was printed. 1844. 18. Let's go inside the book. So this is what he says about Isaiah the prophet. Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, was an Ethiopian who prophesied unto Egypt and Ethiopia. As God commanded him, saying... We know Isaiah was not Ethiopian. He was an Israelite. Okay, but go ahead. As God commanded him, saying, Go, and loose the sackcloth from off thy loins, and put off thy shoes from thy feet. Walk naked and barefoot, he did so. Three years for a sign and a wonder unto Egypt and Ethiopia, preaching unto his brethren the word of God. But they obeyed not the word of the Lord by the mouth of the prophet, and were led away, young and old, naked and barefoot into captivity. Isaiah 20. As they were black, so was he. As he was naked, so were they. Led naked and barefoot, young and old into captivity. Even unto this day, from Africa, their descendants are led away by a wicked people into slavery. Do y'all see that? Led away by a wicked people into slavery damn so now let's open up with uh isaiah chapter six yeah yeah exactly isaiah chapter six and we're gonna start hold on yuri let me get it we're gonna start at verse one uh um Alicia, do you have the the pictures Alicia, do you have the pictures Yes, right there. Let's go. Isaiah, all I want is verse 1. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Now, his train was the garment. Put it on the screen. Train filled the garment. He had a bad garment on, okay? 
Next verse. Above it stood the seraphims. The seraphims are angels, okay? These are some high-ranking top angels. Their job was to cover the throne. Like the Ark of the Covenant, you had images of angels over the mercy seat. That was represented by from the kingdom of heaven, where the Lord was sitting on the throne, and you had the seraphim on either side. Go ahead. Above it stood the seraphims. What verse you at? Verse 2. Go ahead. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. Give me the next picture. Each one had six wings. With twain, he covered his face. With twain, he covered his face. And with twain, he covered his feet. Give me the next picture. And with twain, he covered his feet. Read that again. With twain, he covered his face. And with twain, he covered his feet. And with twain, he did fly. Twain means two. Go ahead. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Verse 4. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Come on. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. Give me the next picture. Read again. Then, he, then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am, I am a man of unclean lips. So this is Isaiah speaking before the Lord. Go ahead. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Talking about the Israelites of unclean lips. Go ahead. For my eyes have seen the king. The Lord of hosts. So this king, the Lord of hosts, is Christ. That's who it's talking about. Go ahead. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand. Having a live, give me the next one. Having a live coal in his hand. Go ahead. Which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. You know the tongs is like when you cook and you, you pick it up with that, I don't know what his tongue is called. Okay, a fork or whatever. The angel came and took out a coal. Read that verse again so we can get to understanding. The, then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. Give me the next picture. Okay. Read. And he laid it upon my mouth. Give me the next picture. Read again. And he laid it upon my mouth. So the angel took the coal and laid it on Isaiah's mouth. Go ahead. And said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away. And thy sin purged. So Isaiah's sin was being purged from him. Okay. Read. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I sin? You see that? You see that? Read that again. Read that again. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I sin? And who will go for us? So the Lord is asking, Who can I send back to the earth for us? To teach the word of the Most High. Go ahead. Then said I, here am I, send me. Wait, wait, wait. Here am I, send me. This is a prophecy that Isaiah, now remember, we're in Isaiah chapter 6. This is a prophecy that Isaiah would return. Here, here's the precept. 2nd Ezra 2, eight, 17 and 18. Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 17. Fear not, thou mother of the children. Talk about Jerusalem. Go ahead. For I have chosen thee, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. For thy help will I send my servants, Esai and Jeremy. For thy help will I send my servants. Esai means Isaiah. Write that down in your Bible. On the, if you got a computer, it'll say Esau, but that's wrong. It's Isaiah. Read that again, verse 18. For thy help will I send my servants, Esai. So no, no, no. Listen. Ezra was during the Persian captivity. Isaiah had been dead already. God says here to Ezra, I'm going to send Isaiah and I'm going to send Jeremiah. So when people say you don't come back, they don't know what they're talking about. What Bible are they not reading? Their spiritual eyes must be closed. Read that again, verse 18. For thy help will I send my servants, Esai and Jeremy after whose counsel I have sanctified and prepared for thee 12 trees laden with diverse fruits. Guess what? The 12 trees goes back to the 12 apostles, okay? Which go, helps with the 12 tribes. So I said Isaiah and Jeremiah would help them. Everybody see that? Everybody understand that? 
that goes right now jump back to the chapter before it chapter 1 in verse 37 second Ezra chapter 1 verse 37 I take to witness the grace of the people to come I take to witness the grace of the people to come go ahead Whose little ones whose little ones mean your children. Go ahead. Rejoice in gladness. Go ahead. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes. We've not seen the Lord with bodily eyes. Go ahead. Yet in spirit, they believe the thing that I say. But in the spirit, we believe everything this Bible says. Is that right? Read. And now, brother, behold, what glory. And see the people that cometh from the east. Mm -hmm. Unto whom I will give for leaders. Abraham. So God said, I'm going to send Abraham back. Go ahead. Isaac. I'm going to send Isaac back. Go ahead. And Jacob. I'm going to send Jacob back. Go ahead. Hosea. That's Hosea. I'm going to send the prophet Hosea back. Amos. I'm going to send the prophet Amos back. And Micah. I'm going to send the prophet Micah back. Joel. I'm going to send the prophet Joel back. Abdias. I'm going to send Abdias. That's Obadiah. Back. Go ahead. And Jonas. I'm going to send the prophet Jonah back. Go ahead. Nahum. I'm going to send the prophet Nahum back. And Habakkuk. I'm going to send the prophet Habakkuk back. Sophonias. I'm going to send the prophet Zephaniah back. Agias. I'm going to send the prophet Haggai back. Zachary. I'm going to send the prophet Zechariah back. And Malachi. I'm going to send the prophet Malachi back. Which is called also an angel of the Lord. So the Lord is sending these prophets back in these last days. Y'all understand that? You know, you, that's why they can't stop this. And we don't know who's who. We don't know who's who. But we know those prophets are back. Guess what? And we know that they grew up in a grimy state when they're getting their minds right. And they're going to come to the, fulfill, the fulfillment of their spirit. You got to believe that. Y'all understand? Can you say it on the mic? You got you got to believe that because what they worried about what they call the phenomenon because when the Most High start bringing them spirits back and they are here, there's no way in the world what you see happening is happening for no other reason but the Most High Himself is doing it. Esau can't stop that if they spent billions and billions of dollars trying to hide the progress of us going through the neighborhoods and the, they doing all kind of stuff to try to stop this truth and it ain't working. But the Most High has got his spirit on these prophets, and they are here. And thank God for that, so we get the living piss hell out of this damn place. Give me Revelation 7, 4. Now I'm going to show you how Revelation ties into the same thing. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 4. Uh -huh, watch this. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Y'all see that? So guess who's part of that 144? Isaiah? Jeremiah? All them names we just read, they part of the 144. They coming back. You, that's Planned Parenthood tried to stop this. Shutting down the history in the school, they trying to stop this. Christianity's trying to stop this. Islam's trying to stop this. You can't stop this great awakening. Bring an LGBT thing all up in, well, AGB, now I got to say all them letters. <laughs> trying to bring them into the schools to twist the minds of our young kids. It ain't stopping nothing. That's right. It ain't stopping, stopping nothing. nothing. Revelation 10, 11, please. Watch what he says to the prophet John. I'm showing you proof. I'm giving you scripture. I'm giving you proof. Bible that the prophets would be back in these last days. Revelation chapter 10, verse, Start at 10, verse 10, verse 10. And I took the little book. That's the Bible. The little book is the Bible out of the angel's hand and ate it up. He studied it and it was in my mouth. Sweet as honey. Oh, we're going to get the kingdom. That's the sweetest honey. Go ahead. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. You know why it's bitter? Because he saw a lot of death. He saw a lot of brothers and sisters falling off, going back into the world again. That's the bitterness. The persecution, that's the bitterness. Go ahead, watch this. And he said unto me, Here come. Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. John died on the island of Patmos. John died on the island of Patmos. What you going to do with that? So what you going to do with that right there? Now what, what in the world does a Christian preacher have to say about this verse here? He just can't read it. They can't, they can't even read this. You can't, there's no interpretation but what it says. You don't exactly. even have to interpret that. Here you go. 
Hey, and this is why so when, when the scriptures talk about love your neighbor as you love yourself, it's not the scripture says, how could you say you love God who you never see but hate your brother? You know why that's so important? You might be hating on Father Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. You don't know who you're hating on. Y'all understand that? Revelation 11, 11, please. Revelation chapter 11, verse 11. Here's that great awakening of them prophets of the 144. And like I said during men's conference, the 144 are all apostles. Every last one of them. Y'all understand that? Read that. And after three days and a half. After 350 years, what happened? The spirit of life. The spirit of life is, the, is the Holy Spirit. The spirit of life is the Holy Spirit. Read it again, the verse again. And after three days and a half. The spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Do y'all see that? This is what y'all see right now. And this, this ain't nothing to what it's going to turn into. From state to state, country to country. You mark those words right there. Watch this. Ezekiel 37, 9 and 10. That's that fear. They want to shut this down. But it ain't going to stop nothing. This is why we need the support of you men and women online. We need your support. Your constant support. Read that. Ezekiel 37, 9 and 10. Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 9. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man. And say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God. Come from the four winds, O breath. Guess what the breath is? The Holy Spirit. The breath is the Holy Spirit, the same breath we just read about, the spirit of life from God. Talking about the same thing. Go ahead. And breathed upon these. And, and, and breathed upon these. These slain that they may live. Uh-huh. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them. The Holy Spirit came into them. Go ahead. And they lived. And they lived. Their spirit lived. Go ahead. And stood up upon their feet. An exceeding great army. An exceeding great army. This is the word of God. This is the prophecies that we are living. These are the prophecies that we are living. From there. A, go back to now Isaiah. Now, as you as I'm looking at the as I'm looking, put that picture back up there again. If those brothers, the one that one and the one before that, if if those men were committing crimes, doing something crazy, every camera would be there. You feel me? But because of this, they act like they're not seeing it and all that because they, they have nothing to do with this. And they're looking at it and they are struck with terrible fear because they're like, who the hell is organizing this? Mm -hmm. And see they that? know it's the most high. That's right. They know it. They know mm -hmm. it. They don't want us to know it like they're writing them books. Right. They say, we know this is the Lord dealing with this, but we're going to tell you that it ain't the Lord. You're a bunch of fakers. A bunch it's of fakers. fakers and all that. No, only the Lord can do something like this here. Mm -hmm. Here you hey, go. You know what? Wait, leave that up there. Let me tell you something, brothers. No, put that back there, the picture up. You see this right here? Brothers, I'm telling you, man, your guys should. Your guys should. When I look at something like that, that thing brings like joy. That thing brings chill. We, listen, you know we grew up in a world all our lives they tell us we're nobody. Right. You guys understand that? We find ourselves being in the, the, the greatest movement in the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. If you guys not happy about that, I don't know what's going to make you happy. Right. Bro. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, give yourself a hand, man. Right. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. You better ride that train, bro. The hell is this? Bishop, you know what's so heavy? Bishop Nathaniel, you look at this picture, you say, that ain't nothing, no. That ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. That Because when what Ezekiel said, what he saw, that great exceeding, man, great exceeding. That's why I said, I'm not satisfied with this. No, we should never be satisfied as long as we know our brothers on the other side of the world are being whooped and sold as slaves. The hell is this? We got to go fish them. Exactly. Isaiah 6 again, Yuri. You with me? Yes, sir. Verse 8 again. Isaiah chapter 6. Hey, give me the next picture. No, the next one. Right there. Read again, verse 8. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. Put also, up. I heard the voice of the Lord. Put up! Read. 
Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Uh, Isaiah said, Send me. Give me the next one, next picture. Give me the next picture. Give me the next picture. Isaiah said, Here am I, send me. Give me the next picture. He said, Send me, Lord. Verse 9. And he said, Go. Now the Lord said to Isaiah, Go. Go ahead. And tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Now he's talking about the Israelites. This people, hear ye indeed, but understand not. We hear the scriptures, but we don't understand. We see what the Bible is saying, but we don't indeed perceive it. Go ahead. Make the heart of this people fat. Make the heart of this people fat. And make their ears. Give me the, give me the next picture. Go ahead. Make the heart of this people fat. Make the heart of this people fat. And make their ears heavy. Make their ears heavy. And okay. shut their eyes. Shut their, I mean in their spiritual eyes. Go ahead. Lest they see with their eyes. Lest they should see with their eyes. And hear with their ears. And hear with their ears. And understand with their heart. And understand with their heart. And convert. And convert. And be healed. Didn't Christ say the same thing? Get, go back, go to Matthew 13 and 14. Keep those church pictures up there. Because if you notice, you got cobwebs all back there. You got blind people in the church. They can't see with spiritual eyes. They can't hear with their spiritual ears. They can't understand the Bible. Our job is to go tell them, like Christ said, Matthew 13, 14, please. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 13, verse 14. Watch this. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. Wait, no, no, wait, wait. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. This is Christ speaking. Which saith, by hearing ye shall hear. Hearing you shall hear. And shall not understand. You Israelites, you don't understand. Go ahead. And seeing ye shall see mm -hmm. and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross. That's what it means when it's to make their heart fat. Meaning wax gross. Go ahead. And their ears are dull of hearing. Mm -hmm. And their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. See that? The Lord's letting us know there's a remnant allotted not to wake up. That some of your mothers, some of your fathers, some of your children will not wake up to this truth. They will fight you, they will come against you. Read. But blessed are your ears. But you men and women, Christ said, blessed are your ears. Go ahead. For they see. Blessed are your eyes, for they see. Excuse me, go ahead. And your ears for they hear. Uh-huh. Let's go on back. Let's go on back to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 10. Uh-huh. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Go ahead. Watch this verse 11. Give me the next picture. Then said I, Lord, how long? How long will this be, Lord? How long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted. He said, until Jerusalem, Israel is wasted. Without inhabitants. With no Israelites remaining there. Go ahead. And the houses without man. And the houses without man. And the land be utterly desolate. He's talking about 70 AD. He's talking about 70 AD. This is what you're seeing here. All the Israelites were either, they ran, ran out, got caught in slavery, one was murdered. Verse 12. And the Lord have removed men far away. And the Lord removed men, the Israelite men, far away. And there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. Now Christ said the same thing in Luke 21. Give me that, Yuri. Luke 21, 24. Christ said the same thing Isaiah said. Watch Luke. this. Luke. Remember what we just read. It said, until the cities be wasted without an inhabitant, the houses without man... The land be utterly desolate. And it says, and the Lord have removed men far away. And there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. Watch what Christ says here, Luke 21, 24. Luke chapter 21, verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword mm -hmm. and shall be led away captive. Give me the next picture. Yep. Read it again, Yuri. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. The Israelites that remain would fall by the edge of the sword, Rome's sword. Go ahead. 
and shall be led away captive. And shall be, give me this more pictures, unless I need you to pay attention. And shall be led away captive. Go ahead. Into all nations. Into all nations. And Jerusalem. And Jerusalem. Shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. Shall, who's going to live in Jerusalem? Read it again. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. Until when? Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until the time of the Gentile rulership be fulfilled. So Christ is saying the same thing that Isaiah said. Go back to Isaiah. Yes, sir. Hey, listen, man. This thing went chill. So, hey, some of you, I think some of you mistaken the big picture. You take Isaiah as the one when we agree to come back? I want you to take now. That's some heavy stuff right there. I know some of you knew. Some of this is getting to your head. This is why Bishop read uh, uh, 2 Ezra chapter 1. You guys remember? He's showing you all this. Listen, that, that's us. I know you guys looking at this. Take this. this is talking about us. We all agree to our most Yes, send me back. But most of us to show us what's going to happen. We say, okay. He shows the chain, how they're going to put. But most I say, don't worry about it. Remember what, uh, what is that, Ezekiel? Remember? He said, no, not Ezekiel, Jeremiah. said, that, shall this continue? Yes. Yes. Jeremiah? Yes. Do, didn't you think Jeremiah, Jeremiah agreed to come back? But most of the Jeremiah, don't worry, you're going to catch yourself. Right. That's what Bishop is saying. Hey, read that, read Things that, read heavy, that. man. Read that. Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 4. Hey, because this precept for what we just read in 2 Ezra, chapter 2, where it said, I will send Isaiah and Jeremy. Jeremiah back. Read that. And thou, and even, thou, and thou, meaning thou, Jeremiah, even thyself, even you, Jeremiah, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. Mm, that's talking about when he went into slavery. Not, not during that time. When he would come back. Go ahead. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. See that? I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. In the land which thou knowest not. In America. Jeremiah went on the slave ships. That's right. Yep. That's the point. Jeremiah was on, was yeah. shackled up beside you and me. And he, listen, and you know that's prophetic. Read that one more time again. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. He's being specific to Jeremiah. He said, you're going to be discontinued from the heritage that I gave you, Jeremiah. Read on. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. In the land which thou knowest not. Now remember, Jeremiah never went to Babylon. He never went. He came back to the land. So he's telling him, you're going to go serve slavery, Jeremiah. And it didn't happen then. Jeremiah was let go. He went back to Jerusalem. Baruch and the rest of them went out there. Man, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The prophets are back on the earth. That's why these churches don't want to deal with us. That's why they don't want to go through this Bible. They don't want to sit down and talk with us with this Bible because they know we are going to pick this Bible apart and show what they're doing is lies. And it's not for you. We pray that many of you pastors will come out of that. But we're talking to the people in Islam, in the Christian church. It's time for you to examine who are you learning from? Who are you learning from? Many of you have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. It's time for you to question that and come home. You are the Israelites. Hmm. Damn. Yuri, where we at? Go back to Isaiah 6. Yes, sir. We at uh, read verse 11. Okay. Not read verse 12. Go ahead. For, verse, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 12. And the Lord have removed men far away, and they be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. Come on. But yet in it shall be a tenth. I want y'all to pay close attention to that right there. But yet in it shall be a tenth. You know how, I'm going to show you something. Get Zechariah 13 and 8. We always read this. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land... Stop. Do y'all see that word right there? It says land, right? Land, meaning this is talking about America. Land, only America. Go ahead. Saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Two parts of the Israelites here shall be cut off and die. Go ahead. But the third shall be left therein. But the third shall be left therein. Meaning the third is going to repent. Was that the whole verse, Yuri? Yes, sir. Go back to Isaiah 6 and 13. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 13. But 
yet in it shall be a tenth. Now this tenth here is more than the one third in America. This tenth is talking about Israel worldwide. Remember, we were scattered. We were removed into all places. God said, in Israel, is going to be a tenth that's going to come back. So that's just not America. That's Africa. That's Europe. That's the Caribbean islands. That's over uh, in the f- freaking Iran areas over there. Everybody understand that? Read it again. This go in the spirit of life from God. Go read it again. But yet in it, the it is Israel. Go ahead. Shall be a tenth. And it shall return. And it, that tenth, shall return to the one true God is Israel. Go ahead. And shall be eaten. And shall be eaten. Go ahead. As a teal tree. As I want you to exa- look at the imagery. As a teal tree. And as an oak. Uh-huh. Whose substance is in them. You know how a tree is cut down. It's giving you the image of a tree. Two trees cut down. Why two trees? Because we are split into two kingdoms. In it, guess what? Can that tree live again? Yeah, because you, all you need is that one little sprout to come up, and that tree will live again. This is what he's saying here. Read it again, verse 13. But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return, and shall be eaten as a teal tree, and as an oak whose substance is in them. That substance is God's spirit. That reawakening of God's spirit that's in us. Go ahead. When they cast that illumination, thank you. When they cast their leaves. So the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. See that? The holy seed shall be the substance thereof. Now give me that precept for the holy seed in Ezra. There's one in Ezra 9 and 2, I believe it is. Thank you. Is it Ezra 9 and 2? I'm not looking at it. Let me hear it. No, Ezra, Ezra in the Bible. Ezra, Ezra. Ezra, chapter 9 and verse 2. Is that it, Yuri? Because I'm not looking at it. Yes, sir. Go ahead. For they, for they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. So we sin, and it's still referred to us as the holy seed. We are the holy seed. But guess, as we read on, I'm going to show you the, the holy seed begins with Christ. That's the only way that substance can come back. Go back. Go back to Isaiah 6.13. Read it again. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 13. But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return, and shall be eaten as a teal tree and as an oak, whose substance is in them when they cast their leaves. So the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. Watch this. Job 14 and 7. Here's an analogy that Job gives about the tree. So you can get the visual. Job 14 and 7. Yes, sir. Job chapter 14, verse 7. For there is hope of a tree. There is hope of a tree. Remember we talked about the teal tree and the oak tree. Go ahead. If it be cut down. If it be cut down. That it will sprout again. A tree will sprout again. Although you cut it down. Job says it's going to sprout again. Go ahead. And that the tender branch thereof will not cease. God gave the same analogy to Isaiah for us. Although we got destroyed as a nation, as a people, as a race. He said their substance is still in them. The Holy Spirit is still going to reactivate them, reawaken them. Read. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth and the stock thereof die in the ground. Watch this. Yet through the scent of water. Through the scent of water, God's word. It will bud. It will what? It will bud. It will start to grow again. That's what you're seeing right now. And bring right. forth bowls like a plant. Y'all see it? Do y'all, everybody see that right there? Mm-hmm. From there. That was verse 9, Yuri? Yes, sir. From there, give me Isaiah 10 and 21. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 21. The remnant shall return. See that? The remnant shall return. Go ahead. Even the remnant of Jacob mm-hmm. unto the mighty God. Unto the mighty God. Read. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. That's that tenth. That's that tenth we were just reading about. Go ahead. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. With righteousness. Isaiah 11 and 1. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. Uh It's talking about the same analogy. You got a stump. 
Put that on the screen. Yeah, put that on the screen. Read it again. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. So there's going to grow a plant out of the stump of Jesse. Go ahead. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. And a branch shall grow out of the roots. Go ahead. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. This is talking about Christ. Go ahead. That's why I said he's the first of the holy seed. Go ahead. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. See that? So from there, from there, watch this. Isaiah 37, 31. So without Christ, we would not be here. He it had to start with him. Isaiah 37 and 31. Isaiah chapter 37, verse 31. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. Do y'all see that right there? Read that again. Read it again one more again. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. You know why that's so important? People want to know why all nations and the races can come here, but they're so hard on the so-called American black. They're so hard on that group right there. Why? Because they know it's, this whole thing is going to start with Judah. Give me that precept in Deuteronomy 33. I think it's verse 10, if I'm not mistaken, or 7. Deuteronomy 33 it might be 7 or 10. I can't remember. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 7. And this is the blessing of Judah. And he said, hear, Lord, the voice of Judah, mm -hmm. and bring him unto his people. So they know. That group right there, like we read in the book that, that Edomite wrote, he said that group right there, that group of fakers, I don't want to admit they're Israelites. They're the ones. Them the guys. Hey, Bishop, not only, not only in that book, but in that book by Ronald Sanders, it right. says the same thing. He said, after we have all, he said, one nation shall come bringing many things to this nation. Mm -hmm. And after we have all been provided for, we will go forth from where we now are and rule over the whole earth as we once did. That was go. Gad talking about Judah coming over on a slave ship. There you go. Right there. Did you finish that year? We're going back. Isaiah 37 again. Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 37, verse 31. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah Listen good. shall again take root downward. Shall again take root downward. This starts with Christ. Go ahead. And bear fruit upward. And shall bear fruit. Put it on the screen. Shall bear fruit upwards. So it's given an analogy that although the nation of Israel was cut down like a stump of a tree, put, they're going to grow. They're going to grow. They're going to grow. Go ahead. Oh, Lord have mercy. Go ahead. Verse 32. Yes. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant. See that? For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant. Go ahead. And they that escape out of Mount Zion the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do that. The zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do that. Watch this. Watch John 15 and 1. Let's see what Christ said. John 15. John chapter 15 and verse 1. I am the true vine. Christ said, I am the true vine. That goes back to Isaiah 11. It goes back to Isaiah 6, 13. It starts with Christ. He said, I am the true vine. Go ahead. And my father is the husbandman. Uh-huh. Every branch in me, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, uh -huh. he taketh away. He ta if you don't bear fruit in this truth, brothers and sisters, if you want to still be that old scallywag brother, or you want to be that sister who's a hoe with a W, you're going to be taken away. Read again. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Mm -hmm. And every branch that beareth fruit. And every branch that beareth fruit. He purgeth it. He purgeth it. That it may bring forth more fruit. You know what it means by he purges? You know when you purge, how do, how do you call A tree, uh, prune it. You prune it. You trim it so you, you keep it growing so it can grow. Right. That's your, that's our trials. That's our tribulations. That's our temptations. That's the purging, the pruning of us. Everybody understand that? Read on. Verse 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Right. Not water baptism. The word of God is what cleans you. Go ahead. Abide in me. Christ said abide in me. And I in and you. And I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. That's why I said it all starts with Christ. We can't do nothing without the king. Everybody understand that? Read it again. Abide in me and I in you. 
as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye. No more can ye. Us. Go ahead. Except ye abide in me. Read. I am the vine. Christ said, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Do me a favor, Yuri, and jump back to verse 2. Verse 2. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Now I want to pause there just for a second. Every branch in me. We read the scripture and we assume. Never assume. We can't assume that y'all understand. Read it again, Yuri. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. So he ta well, now we want to pause there. Get Galatians 5, 19. Yep, put that on the screen. You can put me in a box. Put me in picture in picture if y'all got the camera right. Now read that, Yuri. This is what it means, every brand, if you don't bear fruit, this is what you're doing right here. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, mm -hmm. which are these. So this is explaining, if you don't bear fruit in this truth, go ahead. Adultery. You're committing adultery. Fornication. Fornication. That's Un still sexual sin. Mm -hmm. Uncleanness. Uncleanness, if y'all see right there, it says vile affections. That's you pedophiles. We got to deal with a case like that. It ain't touching, ain't nobody touching nobody. But you brothers online looking at kitty porn, let me look, let me point this way. Looking at child porn, you better correct that. Hey, put it back on the screen. Put me picture in picture, Alicia. Oh, you can't do it. Okay, well, leave that right there. Read on. Messed up my train of thought. Go ahead. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. Mm -hmm. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness, as you see right there. What does it say? Offensive sexual desire some of you brothers some of you sisters too you want sister to talk about he gotta be 13 inches all he, I can what the, what the, she ain't ready to get married she's still a hoe with a W read that again now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these adultery Adulteries, fornication, fornication, uncleanness, uncleanness, lasciviousness, lasciviousness. Uh, yeah, we looked that one up. Idolatry, idolatry. You got your cross around your neck, thinking it's good. You got your Muslim. What's that that thing Muslims wear? They got this crescent, the moon and the star. It's all idolatry. Go ahead. Witchcraft, witchcraft. You and your horoscopes Hate. and all that. Go ahead. Hatred, hatred for your brother, for your sister. Variance. Variance means conflicts. You're always contrary and conflicting with somebody. That Some of you brothers know who you are. Go ahead. Emulation. Emulation means what? When you imitate for the wrong reason. You emulate to be better than somebody. Now, the disciples imitated Christ, but that was a good thing. They wanted to be like him. When it says emulation, you're trying to be better than someone in a negative context. Go ahead. Read say it. You're trying to, you're trying, your emulation towards them is like you want to topple that person and bring them down. It's not like you're trying to be inspired. You're trying to take them, you're trying to take their place. That's the emulation that it's talking about here. Right. Okay. Read. Emulations, wrath. Wrath. Mm -hmm. Strife. Strife. Seditions. Seditions. Heresies. Heresies. Envyings. Envyings. Murders. Murders. Drunkenness. Drunkenness. Wow, we had to deal with that too a couple of weeks ago. Drunkenness. Go ahead. Revelings. Revelings is partings. Party over here ain't talking about righteous parties. Talking about, you know, in the world when they make it real hot. You know, you go to the club, they say keep it real hot. So that way they buy alcohol and play songs about adultery. That way, who, no matter who married, they gonna get together. What, yeah, all that's witchcraft. There's the science behind it. Okay, Yuri, did you finish your good job? Yeah. You know, as we look at this and we go through these different points here, everyone should be like you had pointed out, Bishop, and I had found uh, a thing here uh, that you had had that's posted up, and it says, "Examine yourself," is for you to take moral inventory. And that's what's supposed to be happening here. Right. When, these, when these things come up, you're supposed to be, like Paul said, examine yourself. Go through your own, examine and see, do I have this spirit? Do I have that spirit? That's what we're supposed to be doing, not just glossing over it. Mm -hmm. 
supposed to be really taking inventory to see where your mind and your spirit is. You read it, go back to John 5 again. John 15 and, and 2 again. Yes, sir. John chapter 15 and verse 2. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Mm -hmm. And every branch that beareth fruit. Now we want that part. Okay, gotcha. Every branch that bears fruit. Now go back to Galatians 5.22 and read that. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. Almost there. All right. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Let's pause right there. Now, if you see right there in the tree, I got 2 John verse 6. Give me 2 John verse 6 because the, the Christian woman and Christian man says, yeah, I love every. I just love, love. We're not without understanding the biblical context of the word love. love. Read that. 2 John verse 6. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. So the love the Bible is talking about is keeping the command. That is the first fruit of the spirit. Go back to Galatians. So you can't knock that out. You must be. These Christians, they don't, they're not keeping the commandments. They'll, they'll associate with everything else in the, them lying cells. But not keep the first one, love, which is keeping of God's commandments. Read that again, Yuri. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Uh-huh. Joy. Next thing is joy. Some of you are keeping the commandments, but you don't have no joy in this truth. You're miserable. <sighs> oh, God. I got to keep. Hey, give me that precept in is Amos 5. When will a new moon be gone? Yeah, give me that. Give me that, Yuri. You have no joy. You're miserable because you hate God's commandments. Read this. Amos chapter 5 and verse 8 and 5. Thank you. Amos chapter 8 and verse 5 saying, when will the new moon be gone? When will the new moon be gone? I can't stand it. Go ahead. That we may sell corn. I want to sell. I want to do work. I want to do business. Go ahead. And the Sabbath that we may set forth a week. And when will that Sabbath be gone? I can't stand that Sabbath day. Making the ephah small and the shekel great and falsifying the balances by deceit. All right. So now let's go on back. Back to Galatians 5. So taking, like Bishop Yahweh said, taking moral, moral inventory of yourself, which is self-examination. You got to look at the fruits of the spirit and the fruits of the, the works of the flesh and identify where do you fit in. I can't tell you. Everybody I look at, y'all look like super Israelites to me. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. Read that again, Yuri. Yes, sir. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Can you put it back on the screen, please? Okay. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, mm -hmm. gentleness, goodness, faith. Meekness. See, meekness, the word meekness goes into humble. You're humble, not to somebody saying, you got to be humble to me. No, humble to the word of God. Humble, meekness means to humble to the word of whatever it says, you're going to do it. Let me give you an example. Give me that in Revelation 14 and 4, I believe it is. These are they. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women. Philosophies, go ahead. For they are virgins. Uh-huh. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. They follow Christ. Wherever he goes, they go. Whatever Christ says do, they do. Everybody understand that? So that's an example of being meek, of meekness. Go back. Verse 23. Meekness. Temperance. Temperance means disciplining yourself. Go ahead. Against such, there is no law. There's no law you can pull to, to condemn any of those fruits of the Spirit. Because they're all, all those fruits of the Spirit are based on the keeping of God's commandments. Y'all understand that? That's the root of it in Christ. That is the root of it. The trunk of it. Okay? From there, give me Galatians 3 and 16. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 16. 
Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. That's why I said the holy seed starts with Christ. It does not start with us. It starts with Christ. He's the first of the holy seed. You ever understand that? That's what Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, all the way down to 16 is all about. Gives you his generations, his genealogy. The Holy Seed will come through that lineage. Everybody understand that? All righty then. So, I know. Y'all thought I forgot about the Arabs. I didn't forget about the Arabs and what they did to us. I ain't forget about the Arabs. Oh, put that back up on us. Put that next picture on the screen. I'm sorry. The Holy Seed, Christ of the tribe of Judah for Israel. Okay. We're going, to, we're going to come back to this, okay? But I want to touch on, go back to them Arabs just for a second. Give me Isaiah 21. Let me get it, Yuri. Let me get it. Isaiah 21. And we're going to start at verse, let me look, 11. Isaiah chapter 21, verse 11. The burden of Duma. Stop. The burden of Duma. Who is Duma? Yuri, give me Genesis 25 and 14. Genesis chapter 25, verse 14. Uh, let's start at, you read it. And Mishma and Duma. Duma is what we wanted right there. Jump up to verse 12 and read down. Verse 12. Now they now these are the generations of Ishmael. Hey, do we have the chart about Ishmael or the book? In Bible dictionary, Zondervan dictionary on the Ishmaelites. Anybody got the Bible dictionary here? Mine is home. I left it home. Bible dictionary, Zondervan. Okay. Read again, Yuri. And these are the names of the sons of Ishmael. By their name, excuse me, I started verse 12. Now these are the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar, the Egyptian, Sarah's handmaid, bare unto Abraham. And these are the names of the sons of Ishmael, by their names, according to their generations. The firstborn of Ishmael, Nebajoth, and Kadar, and Abdil, and Mipsam, and Mishma, and Duma. And so what we wanted is Duma. That's one of the sons of Ishmael. These are the Arabs. Everybody understand that? These are the Arabs. I want that Bible dictionary so I can, you know, the scriptures say prove all things. You got it? Okay. I want to look up Ishmaelite. Put it on the screen. That way the people at home can see. Because right now they're going, how you know Ishmael's the Arabs? My pastor, your pastor don't know a damn thing. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Zondervan Bible Dictionary, look up Ishmaelite, not Ishmael, Ishmaelite, meaning people of Ishmael, and the very last, uh, I think it's the very last section, if I'm not mistaken. Ooh, it is hot in here. Y'all got me, Alicia? All right. So I'm going to show you the prophecy concerning Ishmael, the Arabs. What does God say is going to happen? What does the Bible say? Because the Quran ain't going to say it. Sunday school, you ain't going to learn this. The comedic community don't know a damn thing. They ain't going to tell you nothing. Our job is to win our people to this truth that they're the Israelites. We can only do that through teaching. Arguing back and forth, listen, mm-mm. When you read about Christ, he didn't argue. He gave the scripture and kept it moving. Yeah, that's it right there. Read that. You're Ishmaelite. Mm -hmm. A descendant of Ishmael, the son of Abraham and Hagar. Genesis 21, 14 through 21. Now you see on the side, you got, it says all Arabs. That's what I want. That last section. That's the page I want, Alicia, where it says all Arabs. The scholars know Ishmael are the Arabs. 
Yeah, zoom in on that. Or oh, you can't zoom in. That's the how close. Read that, Yuri. All Arabs following Muhammad's example claim descent from Ishmael. Can I get a bomb? Damn. New York, New York, a hell of a town. Y'all didn't know that was in there, Alicia? Zoom in on that. That's close you can get it. Read again, Yuri. All Arabs following Muhammad's example claim descent from Ishmael. The scholars know the Arabs are Ishmael. So when we go back to Isaiah 21, let's go back there again. Isaiah. Was that a bomb? Was that? Oh, sound like a car crash. If, the, if, if Esau knows if, that the Arabs are Ishmael, then they, then they know that you so-called Negroes are not Muslim. Exactly. Good point. Read I, that again, Yuri. Isaiah chapter 21, verse 11. Mm -hmm. The burden of Duma. The burden of Duma, Ishmael, the Arabs. He called it to me out of Seir. Seir is the range of mountains where Esau used to live. When you read in many of these books, you read about the Nabadians. You ever read about them, Nabadians? Took over Mount Seir. Those are Arabs. The Arabs took that whole Mount Seir over. So read it again. The burden of Duma. He called it to me out of Seir. Watchman. Isaiah is the watchman. Watchman. What of the night? What of the night? Watchman. What of the night? He asked him twice to the prophet. The prophet is the watchman. Go ahead. The watchman said, the morning cometh, mm -hmm. and also the night. If you will inquire, inquire ye. Return, come. Read. The burden upon Arabia. The burden upon Arabia. Go ahead. In the forest in Arabia shall ye lodge, O ye traveling companies of Dedanim. Dedanim, Den Dedanim are the Arabs as well. Read. The inhabitants of the land of Tima. Who is the Tima? Get... Go back to Genesis 25. And read it again from verse 13. We're going to read down to 15, Yuri. Yes, sir. Genesis chapter 25, verse 13. And these are the names of the son of, sons of Ishmael by their names, according to their generations. The firstborn of Ishmael, Nebajoth, and Kedar, and Abdil, and Mipsam, and Mishma, and Duma, and Masa, Hadar, and Tima. Who? Tima. Tima. That's Ishmael. These are Arabs. Let's go on back now to verse 14, Isaiah 21, 14. Yes, sir. The inhabitants of the land of Tima brought water to him that was thirsty. Mm -hmm. They prevented with their bread him that fled. So when people fled from war, they were customary to help them in the desert. Go ahead. For they fled from the sword. This is letting you know war is coming. Now remember, these wars that you read about, yes, they did happen back then during the time of Isaiah. But guess what? Isaiah is also prophesying about things to come. That's what I need all of you to understand. Read it again. For they fled from the swords, from the drawn sword. So this is going into the Arabs would flee from the sword, from the drawn sword. Go ahead. And from the bent bow. And from the bent bow. And from the grievousness of war. Let me give an example. Here's an example. Here's a precept. Second Ezra 15, 28. Here's an example of war that Isaiah is talking about. That Esdras went in detail with. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 28. Mm -hmm. Behold, an horrible vision. In the appearance thereof from the east, where the nations of the dragons of Arabia. Dragons of what? Of Arabia uh -huh. shall come out with many chariots. So the Arabs are going to come out to make war. Let's see what's going to happen. Go ahead. In the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon earth. So there's going to be a lot of Arab nations that come to make war. Go ahead. That all they which hear them may fear and tremble. Everybody that hears about these Arabs, the sons of Ishmael, shall be afraid. Go ahead. Also, the Carmanians. Now, when you look up Carmanians, that's Iran. That's Iran. Carmanians is Iran. Write that down. Go ahead. Also, the Carmanians, raging in wrath, shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood. Mm -hmm. And with great power shall they come and join battle with them. And join battle with them. 
and shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. Now, write this down. When it says the land of the Assyrians, that's talking about modern-day Israel. Modern-day Israel. Because remember, Assyria, when you read the Bible, took over the northern kingdom, took them out and put a replacement of nations there. That's the same thing they did in 1948. They put other nations there, Edomite nations there. Everybody understand that? Hold that. Hold that, Yuri. I'm going to show you. Ezekiel uh, 35 and 5, or is it 36 and 5? About Idumia taking the land. Come on. 36, 36. Isaiah, Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia. Against all Idumia. Idumia. Do you have that, Elisha? Definition of Idumia. We need all you men and women to learn. Learn, learn, learn. Come on. Come on. You got me, Alicia? Hey, hey, hey. Talk. How many of you are confused? Uh-oh. That's some good stuff right there, man. I hope you got some good notes. Got some good notes. This is the type of class you got to go over it, over and over. If you're confused, it's okay. Today might not be the day for you to get it, but you will get it. Download it. Listen to it in your, in your car. Those are the type of class you go over, over. Those are some good stuff right there. Put that on the screen. Read you again, You can also Yuri. find it in oh, IUIC TV. Yeah, say it again. I'm sorry. You can also find it in IUIC TV. All great, all great. So Yuri, put that on the screen, Alicia, and Yuri, read the verse again. Yes, sir. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia. Idumia is the Greek word for Edomite. The Edomites are the Caucasians. Go ahead. Which have appointed my land. Which have appointed my land, the land of Israel. Into their possession. They took the land. They took the land. Go ahead. With the joy of all their heart. They said, Anya Yehudi, we are, we'll take the land as Jewish people. Go ahead. With despiteful minds. With despiteful minds, hateful minds. To cast it out for a prey. And they cast the land out for a prey. They said to their fellow Edomites, come to Israel. They call it brothers from Poland. Czechoslovakia, Uzbekistan, Russia, uh, Germany, France. They said, come, come get a piece of this land. It's a free for all. That's what they did. That's what it means to cast it out for a prey. Was that it, Yuri? Yes, sir. Let's go on back to 2nd Ezra. 2nd Ezra, chapter 15 and verse 30. Mm -hmm. Also, the Carmanians, raging in wrath, shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood. Mm -hmm. And with great power shall they come and join battle with them mm -hmm. and shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. They're going to waste a portion of the land of modern day Israel. Go ahead. And this is why they so hell bent on, on Iran not getting uh, uranium for a nuclear bomb. They said no, because Iran keeps saying we're going to wipe Israel off the map. They say, and they know the prophecy. They said, no, don't let them get uranium. They'll blow us to that kingdom come. Read. Verse 31. And then Shall the dragons have the upper hand? Now the dragons goes back. Go back to verse 29. And where, where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots. Let's go back to verse 31 now. And then shall the dragons have the upper hand. Because they destroy a, a portion of the land of Assyria, which is modern day Israel. Go ahead. Remembering their nature. Remembering their nature. Yuri, yes, Genesis sir. 16. What is their nature? Genesis 16. Genesis chapter 16, verse 11. And the, and the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, said unto Hagar, right, the mother, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael. These are the Arabs. This is the forefather of the Arab race. Go ahead. Because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. The word Ishmael means affliction heard. The word Ishmael means affliction heard. Go ahead. 
and he will be a wild man. The Bible prophesies that Arabs would be a wild man. How wild, do you ask? So wild they will strap C4 on their chest, blow everybody to hell and back, thinking they're going to get 70 virgins in heaven. Read that part again. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man. This is letting you know that's solidarity. The Arabs are for themselves. That's to you Muslim brothers and sisters out there. They're not for you black and Latinos. They're for themselves. Read that part again. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man. Mm -hmm. And every man's hand against him. Mm -hmm. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. That's that area that they call today the Middle East. Huh? You had a picture up? I didn't see it. I see a black screen. Uh, Yuri, let's go back to 2nd Ezra 15. What's that? Oh. Yeah, there you go. Put it on the screen. That's what they'll do. And, and you know what? They always pay these younger guys. It's never the old guys. It's all, you got to realize, huh? it's always the, we'll give your family money, but we want you to go out there and do this. Kill everybody. You're going to get 70 virgins. Allah Akbar. And why doesn't one of them say, why don't that old dude, he about to go anyway, send him. Never happens. The young ones are volunteer. They say, I want to do this. Because mm -hmm, they believe in that, whatever. The old ones, I'm not doing that. Yuri, where we at? Verse 31 again. Go ahead. And then shall the dragons have the upper hand, remembering their nature. And if they shall turn themselves, conspiring together. They're going to conspire together. Mm -hmm. In great power to persecute them. They're going to persecute modern Israel. Go ahead. Then these shall be troubled. Uh -huh. These, keep, them Arabs and Khomeini, it says they're going to be troubled. Go ahead. And keep silence through their power and shall flee. They're going to flee because, remember, Israel has been built up by America and London. They got the Iron Dome. Um, Israel is like America over there. Mm -hmm. They got a military power. They got satellites. Them Arab nations can't roll with that. You might get some of them Israelis. But it's, I don't know you, we ain't finished yet. We got something for you. Read that part again. Then these shall be troubled and keep silence through their power and shall flee. They, them Arabs in Iran, they're going to flee. Go ahead. And from the land of the Assyrians. And from the land of the modern Israel. Go ahead. Shall the enemy besiege them. They're going to besiege the Arabs. They're going to besiege Iran. And consume some of they're them. They're going to consume some of the Arabs, consume some of Iran. And in their host shall be fear and dread and strife among their kings. Their leaders is going to be fussing and fighting. Go back to Isaiah 21. And verse 15, I think it was again. Yes, sir. For they fled from the swords, from the drawn swords. So that's when they fled from the swords, from the drawn swords. Go ahead. And from the bent bow. Uh-huh. And from the grievousness of war. Come on. For thus saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord. For thus hath the Lord said unto me, mm -hmm. within a year, mm -hmm. according to the years of an hireling, and all the glory of Kedar shall fail. Do y'all remember who Kedar was? One of the sons of Ishmael. It says all the glory of them Arabs, Kedar, which means dark skin. It says they shall fail. Go ahead. In the residue of the number of archers, the mighty men of the children of Kedar shall be diminished, shall be destroyed. Go ahead. For the Lord God of Israel has spoken it. God prophesied that thing. So we ain't worried about the Arabs. We're going to tell you what's going to happen to the Arabs. Okay. From there, Jeremiah 33, 23. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 23. Because it looked like we're done. It looks like the Israelites is finished, but we're not finished. We're like that stump. Growing, go ahead. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Considerest thou not what this people have spoken, saying, The two families which the Lord hath chosen, he hath even cast them off, thus they have despised my people. Because it looked, because God did cast us off, the two families, the southern kingdom, the northern kingdom. What verse you at, Yuri? Verse 24. Go ahead. That they should be no more a nation before them. And that's what happened. We were no more a nation before the Lord. They, we were destroyed, scattered worldwide. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, if my covenant be not with 
day and night. If my covenant, can y'all give me a sun, moon, and stars? Read again. Thus saith the Lord, if my covenant be not with day and night. Well, actually, this one don't got the sun, moon, and that's another one. But it says, if my covenant be not with what? With day and night. With day and night? Do we have day and night today? Yes. Go ahead. And if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth. If he have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, sun, moon, and stars, go ahead. Then will I cast away the seed of Jacob. He said, if you could do away with day and night and the ordinances of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob. That's us. Go ahead. And David, my servant. Uh -huh. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. Go ahead. So that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But watch this. For I will cause their captivity to return. God said, I'm going to cause their captivity. I mean, I'm going to bring them back. Go ahead. And have mercy on them. God will have mercy on us. Now, I'm going to show you in an illustration. Hosea 12 and 10. I'm going to show you something. Hosea 12 and 10, please. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. He used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. He used similitudes. One thing he says could mean something else. This is a spiritual book. Okay, was that the whole verse, Yuri? Yes, sir. Now watch this. Get Romans 11 and 1. Romans 11 and 1 goes with what we just read in Jeremiah 33. Paul had to address what Israel done away with. Romans chapter 11 and verse 1. I say then, hath God cast away his people? Because that's what it looked like. God destroyed the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. God forbid. Paul said in the spirit of Christ, no. Go ahead. For I also am an Israelite. Mm -hmm. Of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Of the tribe of Benjamin. So now watch this. I'm going to show you some similitudes that the prophets gave. Zechariah 11. Now remember what Isaiah said, that we would be like the teal tree, the oak tree that would begin to sprout. Zechariah 11 and 7. Zechariah chapter 11 and verse 7. Wait, let me get it, let me get it. Go ahead. And I will feed the flock of slaughter. And I will feed the flock of slaughter. We are the flock of slaughter. Go ahead. Even you, O poor of the flock. Mm -hmm. And I took unto me two staves. The word staves there, brother, mean two pieces of wood. Two pieces of wood. Two staves. Go ahead. The one I called beauty. The one I called beauty. And the other I called bands. And the other I called bands. Go ahead. And I fed the flock. And I fed the flock. So these two sticks represents the two kingdoms, Judah and Israel. Everybody with me so far? Read. Three shepherds also I cut hey, off. Hey, put the, put the picture up on the screen. I don't know why that screen is blank over there. Not that one. Nope. 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 I sent one. It should be one of the last ones I sent. Nope. That one right there. Put that on screen. Read again. And I will... Be the flock of slaughter, even you, O poor of the flock. And I took unto me two staves. Two pieces of wood. The one I called beauty, and the other I called bands. And I fed the flock. Go ahead. Three shepherds also I cut off in one month. Write this down to three shepherds. Give me uh, Mark 8.31, the three shepherds. Mark 8.31. Mark chapter 8 verse 31 and he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes. So these are your scribes, these are your Pharisees, Sadducees and the elders of Israel. That's who they are. Go back to Zechariah verse 8. Yes sir. Three shepherds also I cut off in one month and my soul loathed them. God said I hated them. Go ahead. And their soul also abhorred me. Their soul hated God, hated Christ. Y'all see that? Go ahead. Then said I, I will not feed you. I will not feed you. Watch this. That that dieth, let it die. So the Lord said, that that dieth, let it die. Go ahead. And that that is to be cut off, let it be cut off. Mm -hmm. And let the rest 
eat every one the flesh of another. What's that talking about? Who knows what that's talking about? Yes. Cannibalism, when? 70 AD, correct. That's what it's talking about. Read. And I took my staff. And I took my staff. Even beauty. Even beauty. That's the kingdom of Judah. And cut it asunder. And cut it asunder. That I might break my covenant, which I had made with all the people. Uh -huh. And it was broken in that day. And so the poor of the flock that waited upon me knew that it was the word of the Lord. Y'all see that? And so the poor of the flock that waited upon me, guess who that is? The elect. Those were the, the 12. They knew. They said what they, when they saw Israel getting jacked up, they said they, it says they knew it was of the Lord. Read that again, that verse. And it was broken in that day. And so the poor of the flock that waited upon me knew that it was the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I said unto them, if you think good, give me my price. And if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. Give me Matthew 26, 15 is the precept. Matthew chapter 26, verse 15. And said unto them, what will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. Judas speaking, go ahead. And they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. They covenanted with Judas for 30 pieces of silver to betray the son of God. Deacon Lava had a good class on betrayal. We already know that some of you in here are not in this truth to win it. You're in this truth to destroy. Okay, some of you. Okay. And you have covenanted, covenanted with Christian groups. You have covenanted with certain uh, government groups to try to undo what God is doing here for 30 pieces of, enjoy your money while it lasts. Go back. Zechariah chapter 11, verse 12. And I said unto them, if you think good, give me my price. And if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, cast it unto the potter, a goodly price, that it was prized at, at of them. That I was prized at of them. And I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Give me that in Matthew 27 and 5. We're going to read 5 through 10, five verses. To show you what Judas did with the 30 pieces of silver. Matthew chapter 27 and verse 5. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed. And went and hanged himself. Come on. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful for to put them into the treasury, because it is the price of blood. And they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore, that field was called the field of blood unto this day. Blood money. Go ahead. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, And they took the 30 pieces of silver. The price of him that was valued. Because Zechariah's prophecies came from Jeremiah originally. Go ahead. But remember, Jeremiah's books was burnt up. Go ahead. Whom they of the children of Israel did value and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed me. Let's go back. Zechariah 11 and 13 one more time. Yes, sir. And the Lord said unto me, cast it unto the potter, a goodly price that I was priced at of them. And I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Then I cut asunder mine other staff. Now he's talking about the other staff, northern kingdom. Go ahead. Even bands. Uh-huh. That I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. So that was a prophecy. Okay, so notice he used two sticks, staves. He called them staves. Now look at Ezekiel 37, 16 and 17. Ezekiel. Chapter 37 and verse 16. Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it. Now it's not using the word staves, it's using the word stick. Read it again. Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it. For Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. That's uh, Levi and Benjamin. Go ahead. Then take another stick and write upon it. For Joseph, the stick of Ephraim. And for all the house of Israel, his companions, mm -hmm. and join them one to another. See that? And join them one to another into one stick. Into one stick. Go ahead. And they shall become one in thine hand. This is where we get to 12 tribes sign. Read the next verse. 
And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not show us what thou, what thou meanest by these? So he gave the analogy. Get two sticks, one stick, put Judah and his companions, that's Benjamin and Levi. Then get another stick. For Ephraim, in the hand of Joseph, in the hand of Ephraim, is Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and his companions, Simeon, uh, uh, Naphtali, Issachar, Zebulon, so forth and so on. He said, and put them together. And when the Israelites see that, they're going to ask you, what do you mean by this? This is why we got the 12 tribe sign. Why do you got those tribes together on that sign? This is where we get it from. Okay. Now, I want you to see how they got the two sticks coming together. It's the same thing in the New Testament, Romans 11 and 16. Romans chapter 11. Wait, wait, let me get it. Because they thought this was the end of us, our people. It's not the end. This is only just beginning. Romans eleven sixteen. Romans chapter 11, verse 16. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Who's the root, brothers? Christ is that root. Guess what? And who are the branches? Israel's the branches. Read. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, wert graft in among them, and with them that partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Hold that, hold that. Give me Jeremiah. Hold that. Jeremiah eleven sixteen. 16. Why does it say olive tree? I'm confused. Jeremiah eleven sixteen. 16. Jeremiah chapter 11, verse wait, 16. Wait, wait, wait. I didn't get it yet. I'm slow. All right, go ahead. The Lord called thy name a green olive tree. Mm. Bear and of goodly fruit. With the noise of a great tumult, he hath kindled fire upon it, and the branches of it are broken. Y'all see that right there? Do y'all see that? And the branches thereof are broken. Read. For the Lord of hosts that planted thee hath pronounced evil against thee, for the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah, which they have done against themselves, to provoke me to anger in offering incense unto Baal. Let's go on back now. Romans eleven seventeen 17 again. Romans chapter 11, verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree. So the wild olive tree was Israel. Go ahead. Meaning northern kingdom. Go ahead. Work gra I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Read it again. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, wert graft in among them. Put that on the screen. Were graft in among them. This is saying the same thing Ezekiel was saying. Right. This ain't about Esau being grafted in, Chinese being grafted. It's Israel, the two kingdoms. Read that again. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, were graft in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. See, and with them partakest of the root. Well, who's the root, brothers? Uh huh, and fatness, blessings of the olive tree. Remember, he called God called us an olive tree. We just, didn't we just read that? Okay, read. Boast not against the branches. Now he's telling the Israelite, those northern kingdom brothers, don't boast against the branches. Go ahead. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root. You don't bear Christ. Go ahead. But the root, thee. Christ is the one that allowed you to be grafted back into this truth. Go ahead. Thou wilt say then. The branches were broken off that I might be grafted. Yeah, in. Yeah, they fell. You had southern kingdom, the wicked scribes and Pharisees who God killed. They was broken off that we might be grafted in. Go ahead. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Well, they was only broken off because they didn't believe. Go ahead. And thou standest by faith. And you stand by faith. Go ahead. Be not high-minded, but fear. Uh-huh. For if God spared not the natural branches. The natural branches was the southern kingdom of Judah. Right. He came to them first. Read that again. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Mm -hmm. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity. He was severe with Judah. Severe with them. They Remember, they... Paul went to, he said, since you turn it from you, Lord, we turn to the Gentiles. That was, he turned to who? Northern kingdom. Go ahead. But toward thee, 
goodness. But toward thee goodness, right? If thou continue in his goodness. If you what what is God's goodness, brothers? Nobody. Give me that Romans 7, please. Please, Romans 7. What verse is it? Is verse it 12? 12? Romans chapter 7, verse 12. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. And what? And good. And good, and good, and good. Go back. Romans 11, verse 22. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. So that goodness there is continuing in the commandments. Go ahead. Otherwise, thou also shalt be cut off. Mm -hmm. And they also. And they also of Judah. Go ahead. If they abide not still in unbelief. If they repent, get themselves together. Shall be grafted in. Shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. The key word you want is again. Meaning they were in it before. This ain't talking about the Philistines and the Jebusites and the Edomites. They was never in this. Read. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature. See that? For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree. Remember, all Israel is called the olive tree, which is wild by nature. Meaning we was wicked as hell, sinful. And were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree. Yeah, because they was into idolatry, breaking all God's laws. But through Christ, they got a chance to repent. Get yourself right now. Grace. Got it? How much more shall these, which be the natural branches. How much more Judah, which be the natural branches. Go ahead. Be grafted into their own olive tree. Be grafted into their own olive tree. All Israel's coming back together. Go ahead. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. This was a mystery, brothers and sisters. This was a mystery that God would destroy the 12 tribes of Israel and bring them back together in the last day. Everybody see that? Read on. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceit, mm -hmm. that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. Now here's the key. Watch this. And so all Israel shall be saved. Stop! If you ever want to know what Romans 11 is talking about, just start with verse 26 and then go back. Read verse 26 again. And so all Israel shall be saved. That's letting you know what the whole chapter is about. All Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. Hey, put the, put the head back, put that the tree again. Not that tree. Yeah, you can put that up first. Put that up. Put that up. Now give me the other one. With, yeah, that one right there. That's what the grafting in is about. Christ and bringing back all the 12 tribes back together again. Read verse 26 one more time. And so all Israel shall be saved mm -hmm. as it is written. As it is written. They shall come out of Sion, the deliverer. The deliverer is Christ whom the world calls Jesus the Christ. Go ahead. And shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. He's not turning away ungodliness from the Edomites, the Jebusites, the Philistines, or the Egyptians. He's turning away ungodliness from Jacob, from the 12 tribes of Israel. Read that again. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. They shall come out of Zion, the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Mm -hmm. For this is my covenant unto them. Y'all see that? This is my covenant unto them. Them who? Them Israelites. Go ahead. When I shall take away their sins. When I shall take away their sins. Hebrews 8 and 8. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Do y'all see that right there? This whole thing, brothers and sisters, about Israel. All right? 12 tribes! 12 tribes! 12 tribes! All oh, praises. That would say shalom. All oh, praises. Hey, Elisha, where's the video? Elisha, where's the video? The last video I told you to call, to call Deacon for. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this it? Is that it? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play that video, man. Play, Play that. that video. So the bishop was saying, eight years ago, his mind was looking at another continent. While y'all fighting over blocks and street corners, his mind, he said, my mind is gone. I'm out of the United States of America. I'm looking at continents. I'm surveying the earth. Who gave us the name Sierra Leone? Who gave us the name Haitians? Who gave us the name Jamaicans? African American? Who put those names on us? The white man. That's right. God says you're Judah of the nation of Israel. God says you're Benjamin of the nation of Israel. But we left that. Read it again. We are the Israelites. You are a descendant of Jesus Christ, Moses, the apostles. And we're going to prove to you the Bible by biblical proof and historical fact that we are the people of God. Twelve tribes! Twelve tribes! Oh, man, I got goosebumps. Good stuff right there. That's some beautiful stuff. Hey, give Bishop a hand for this class, man. I'm telling y'all, you're not gonna get this thing nowhere else. You're not gonna get this class nowhere else. That's right, that's right. You can stand up. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, that's right. You ain't gonna get this thing nowhere else, man. Y'all doing too much. Oh, please. You made it more hot now. Y'all making it more hot in here. It's okay, Bishop. That'd be all right. Bishop said, you black people making it hot. Sit down. <laughs> all praise. Oh, man. Hey, who got the uh, announcement? You? Captain Joel. Uh, Elisha. Elisha, you got the announcement? Whenever you're ready. You know, clean up and do for ourselves. You know what I'm saying? We just out here trying to be a light. We out here trying to be a light to our people. You know what I'm saying? And give them that, be that example. And let them know if they want change, they got to be a part of the change. You know what I'm saying? So we out here off of Crenshaw and in the neighborhood on 63rd and Victoria, you know, to try to uh, uh, be that example and let our life shine like the Bible says. Y'all doing a good job. I love it. I walk by, I mean, I live on the street right here on Fisher. Uh -huh. And all this trash and cigarettes and bottles, and I am just amazed. I'm like, dang, great. It's great. If everybody could hear, you know, like that, about that, then uh, the world would be a lot better. Right. All praises. Thank you for that. All praises to the Lord. IUIC Los Angeles hit the streets for their community cleanup to show unto the people what coming together to better the community looks like.
They were met with smiles from the nearby residences, and many of the people were overjoyed to see the mess that had been neglected for so long get cleaned up. We had a great time coming together to improve our community and let our light shine. All praise to the Most High. What we about to do, we about to do a youth seminar. We gonna sit up here and teach our people with this. Now it's not fear, now it's not kids, you know what I'm saying? Now it's not covet, now it's not love. You know what I'm saying? We gonna teach them the commandments of God. God has been at an all-time high living. A lot of people sliding on each other. A lot of people drilling on each other. It's time for me to sit up there and step up and show them how to solve these conflicts. Your child up in the way that they should go. Cause if you don't, if you see it, lie it at the door. Betray your child up in the way that they should go. Cause if you don't, if you don't see it, lie it at the door. Train your child up in the way that they should go. Cause if you don't, I ain't got so much money out there in the world. In the future, they gon' remember y'all standing up for them. Train your child up in the way that they should go. Cause if you don't, if you're seeing light at the door, train your child up in the way that they should go. The prophets descended upon Memphis, Tennessee to reach the youth of Hyde, the Hyde Park community, teaching to apply Matthew 18 and conflict resolution skills amongst one another. Our young prophets came to give the sense on how to love your brother as you love yourself. The violence must stop, and it will once we apply the commandments. This is the Little Lights casting call. Little Lights is an educational kids TV show centered around puppets based on the 12 tribes of Israel. Viewers will experience how the Little Lights interact, learn, and problem solve by applying biblical wisdom laws, statutes, and commandments, we are looking for the following positions. Take out your phone, take a picture. Please reach out to your local IT lead for the link to sign up. Next. From what I see, y'all like this? I See, just because I don't agree with you don't mean I can't say there's something good about you. I understand. You're, you're very much disciplined. I see how y'all go to places or whatever. And y'all fearless. Y'all not afraid. I, 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 all that's wonderful. A few moments later. Mm -hmm. Why did he come down here? Let's get that. Let's no, get no, that no, no, in Matthew 15, no, 24. Don't, 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 don't let him read that. No. Don't, don't, don't let him read that. No. 12 seconds later. I walk away before I give you my message. It brings us <laughs> and we are all children of God. Does God hate? The God what? Does he hate? Do he hate? Yes. Yeah, he hates. Who does he hate? He hates sin. Esau. Uh-huh. Have I hated? Dr. Brown, who is Esau? Esau is anyone that disobey God and don't treat God like he's their dad. That's wrong. Esau, the so-called friendly neighborhood white man, came with a shot for us. That vaccine has killed more people than the virus itself. I know y'all want to stay in the New Testament, but listen, us, we deal with the whole Bible. We don't, we don't the decide Bible. between 3.28 a.m. Mm -hmm. So let's point to him. Mm -hmm. Let's not go back to that. Let's go to where he started it at. What is the image of our Christ, Brother Morris? Uh, Jesus Christ, for in the flesh, why? The color was like, um, almost like a Spanish person. The verse that explains that? No, I'm, I would just just left that. Did John explain it to us like that? Who's that? In the scripture? By his feet, like polished brass and stuff like that? Right. That that was the color of him uh, when he was over in Israel. That was his color? Growing up as a teenager and become adult. So when you was a boy, you was a different color? <laughs> The prophets of IUIC Philly got the chance to sit down with two church leaders. Unfortunately, they did not see eye to eye with the scriptures. Lord's will in time, the Lord opens their understanding. All praise to the Most High. Treat him like your daddy. Tune in to Biblical Smoke on Clubhouse, Mondays from 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. 
Eastern Standard Time for our new diaspora segment. Share with your family throughout the world. Let's wake up the dispersed of Israel. 12 tribes. for Toronto Caribbean Hold on, fornication is what the black women, the black men love to do. And what's the older women you have to correct them? Back in the day, our grandmothers, them, they wear dresses. Jamaica, Haiti, all those places, they took our alpha far over it. We are all the people of the book. I've never seen something like that down here, and, you know, I wish it would happen more often. You know that God here not sinners. God will not hear you when you're in your sin. If you're going against what the Bible says, he's not going to hear you. Captain Joel leads the charge as IUIC Canada and Columbus invade the wicked feast known as Carabana. Despite all the reveling that took place in the streets, souls were edified and the Most High definitely got the victory. Please subscribe to all Canadian channels on YouTube. The only way we get out of captivity is by the gospel being preached throughout the four corners of the earth. You can be a part of this great work by getting IUIC Diaspora and IUIC Levant YouTube channels to 10,000 subscribers and share all of the content. Email us at iuic.diaspora at israelunite.org or iuic.levant at israelunite.org. Trinidad and Tobago was able to accomplish their very first community cleanup in the Clever Shalom. Heights Arima area. Overall, the prophets worked together and were able to clean a section of the village without fail. The villagers also received the word of the Most High and even went on to welcome the prophets to join their community group chat. All praise to the Most High. Shalom, brothers and sisters. 
This message is to the 12 tribes whom the world calls the diaspora that are scattered abroad into the four corners of the earth. In Eurasia, including Afro-Russians, the Kunlan people of China, Sidis and Dalits of India, Afro-Turks, known as the Zanj people of Turkey, Sudan, Ethiopia, Madagascar, Mozambique, and other Bantu-speaking groups. In Acts chapter 2 verse 5, there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Why? Because in Isaiah 11, 12, God said he would set up an ensign for the nations and would assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed or the diaspora of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Now is the time that Israel is being gathered. Subscribe now to IUIC Diaspora, where new content will be released regularly to help you learn who you are, what happened to us, and why. Shalom. All right, subscribe to IUIC Diaspora and email us at iuic.diaspora at israelunite.org. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Please subscribe to IUIC Lamont, where we will be uploading content with videos to reach our brothers and sisters throughout the diaspora, the Afro-Palestinians, the Afro-Turkish, the Afro-Syrians, the Afro-Irans, the Afro-Iraqis. As is stated in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 27, the Most High said he would scatter us to the four corners of the earth. Now it's the time to unite as the Israelites. Come and join us. Please subscribe to IUIC Levant for more future content. Shalom. It's the revolution for me. Sons of God move in unity. Something about the cadence of boots hitting the pavement. It sounds like a song of vengeance, a psalm of judgment. If the saints go marching through your city, I pity you. No justice, no peace. No repentance, no revolution. So what's the solution to stopping our persecution? Turning away from all of our transgressions. So we'll stop our oppression when we learn our lesson. That's why we stressing to keep the commandments. You understand when well, we're back to ruling this planet as the most I planted. The most I planted was seized according to his word, but it's more than just words in a book. When law and order occurs, it's spiritual. So what spirit you rolling in when it's fear you choose? Now it's time to reflect, look in the mirror too. And you'll see the wages of sin in a clear view. Stop being deaf and the people will start hearing you. It's bittersweet cause you feel like you're near the proof, but in a sense, everyone knows where the truth lies. Cause the Bible tells what shall ensue that the revolution won't be televised cause it's within you. Far. The revolutionary man needs a revolutionary woman, and the daughter of Sarah supports, love, and appreciates the men of God. These kings, those prophets, the Israelite men in the purple and gold. The revolution will be televised. Watch the full video on IUIC TV. I am always with your greatness. I am always worthy of greatness. For greatness is within me. Greatness is within me. Greatness belongs to me. Greatness belongs to me. Greatness belongs to me. A gray Honda Civic pulled into a parking lot. Here you can see four suspects get out and begin shooting. Even 
if you feel that you are at the weakest point, you must understand the most I brought you to that point for a reason. Failure help you to build character and will teach you a lesson in life. It's a world war three, corruption versus greed, not you versus me. But did we ever think of the need for inner peace? They can't put a price on your soul. Don't matter your religion, right and wrong is something everybody knows. They pick and choose what's evil, who's good and who's evil. And this is the devil's world, but the Lord is coming for his people. Two people were killed and at least 28 others were injured in Baltimore Sunday when gunfire erupted during a gunfire. Why is the one that's fucking talking about who is dead? Dead to the knowledge of yourself. Dead to the knowledge of your own people. Dead to the knowledge of your own guy. Dead to the knowledge of the devil. The picture of Lazarus being dead four days is talking about you. You are Lazarus. You are the dry bone. You are the prodigal son. You are the lost sheep. You are the people about whom the Bible is speaking who will stand up in the last days when the trumpet is found. That's right. We got more, we got more. How do you think something like this will impact the community? I hope they take, I hope they have effect on it. <laughs> Especially the young men. Uh, a lot of the young men out here, they, 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 they don't have no guidance, bro. They out here killing each other over nothing. And that's all the white man wanted to do. Right. That's all he want. And we doing what he want. Right. We still got shackles on us, bro. So I hope they take heed to this. Cause it's all good. There ain't nothing wrong with it. All friends. Thank you. Yo, let me tell you something, man. This is terrifying. They're afraid to death. They should be.
All right, all right. The world needs to know that our saviors are here, who you may ask none other than the mighty men of IUIC. The sisters thank each of you for your selfless acts to rebuild this broken nation back to its rightful state, setting this world right side up, one soul at a time. Watch the full video on IUIC TV. Term tabernacle. Tabernacle. The term tabernacle goes to OKC. Tabernacle started where? In Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Orlando might be beginning, but Oklahoma has mastered it. Tabernacles. Uh, it says in biblical use, a place specifically in Oklahoma. Come on. Where the Feast of Tabernacles is kept yearly as a as commanded by God. As commanded by God. This right, is right, Google. Right. Come on. And only to be observed by believing Israelites. See that? Come on. Uh, number two, <laughs> a term created by Deacon Abiel Israel of Israel United in Christ in the early 21st century. You see this? I'm about to go all the way back. It's Feast of Tabernacles, so we tabernacking. It's Feast of Tabernacles, yeah, you know we tabernacking. It's Feast of Tabernacles, so we tabernacking. It's Feast of Tabernacles, yeah, you know we tabernacking. Yes, it's Tabernacles, I heard tabernacking. Y'all know what it is, Oklahoma gets it cracking. Hey, what's had to shot to Dallas? Easy ride from Cali. We got Memphis in the spirit. Great Northwest knocked out that mileage. Show you wild and yeah. They bought it. Uh, random dance, cause I feel like it. Cabbage patch, running man, might smoke the bricks, cause I be about it. Got a problem, you missed it. Uh, all right, all right, all right. It's that time, y'all. Register today for the National Feast of Tabernacles. Hosted in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 20 years strong. Okay, all right, I gotta say something. I'm sorry. I'm right so petty. This guy's so petty. He made a word, a dictionary word, and this guy, unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. You really, I don't know. All right. All Praises Tabernacles coming up. Stay tuned. Register today with your local REP representative. Spots are filling up fast. Congratulations to the House of Officer Manny of IUIC Philadelphia, the first of many righteous wedding feasts. All praises to the Most High God. This fight that we're in right now is a spiritual fight. And things that happen in the spirit realm will eventually manifest in the physical world. Yeah. 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 Sometimes I pinch myself like, is this really real? Woke up to be a prophet from an imbecile. Why would you look up to them players on the football field? When the wisest man on earth live in Riverdale. So sad, I was lost and confused. Now I'm found in the muse. How did thousands can gather, try to walk in the shoes of JC? All 
praises. You elevated me. Celebrate you on every Sabbath day and every feast. And I'm focused. Please don't take your spirit from me. I premiering tonight on Original Royalty Recording, the first video release. Most High in Christ bless you from Paul the Disciple on his debut studio album, Letters of Paul. Available on Original Royalty, all digital stores, and streaming sites. Donate to the Curse of Miriam today at Matthew213.com. The Hebrews Journal presents El Capitan, our latest journal issue, featuring interviews from the general himself, Bishop Nathaniel, also Captain Abiel and Captain Gad. Enjoy great topics such as food vibes, the native image, our community, and much more as the prophets travel internationally to await the northern kingdom of Israel. Learn more in this issue of the Hebrews Journal. Grab the latest El Capitan issue out now of the Hebrew Journal. Tune in for extraordinary interviews featuring the General Bishop Nathaniel and other mighty captains of IUIC. And that concludes the announcements. Everybody have bread and wine? If not, please raise your hand. All praises. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen. All praises for the bread, the sister that made the bread. All praises, all praises. All right, Israel, let's get on our feet. We got three bishops in the building. Let's clap it up for the class again for the mighty bishops. Check, check. Sisters, y'all can stand up too. Sisters. All right, Israel. Men of Israel, who's the king? Who's the king? What color is he? What color is he? What time is it? What time is it? Who are we? Who are we? 12 tribes? 12 tribes? Unity! 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 Never give up! Never give up! Never give up! Now finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. His what? His what? His what? His what? His what? 